I mean, uh, I know this this podcast is basic. It's for and about stories. So it's not for and about oh, stories. It's usually about a topic. <laughs> I wanted to talk to you about your drinking, but I don't uh, know if you've been oh, done the you're like that. the deep. You're like the deep guy. I want to talk about Comedy Underground and thank you all for doing it. I yeah, think we're all we're on, on different episodes, so that's kind of cool. Is I it got. getting ratings? How's it doing? Yeah, how is it doing? Ratings, that's an old man stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Tweets and page views. Hello from Minnesota, everyone. Hi. How you doing? Uh, it's Welcome to Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank. I'm Ari Shafir, and I'm coming to you live from an Airbnb. I decided not to stay at the hotel in Minneapolis at the Mall of America because how much Mall of America can one person stand? That place seems like it's just a dead mall. Club is all right. Club is good. But the mall itself is like, oh, who's here? No one's here. No one who's anyone is here. Anyway, so what I did is I got an Airbnb and I'm staying at this place. On a, it's, the backyard is on a lake. There's rural... It's fucking desolate. Nothing's around here. I went canoeing today. I went goddamn canoeing. This is what I do with my merch money, everybody. So if you come to one of the live shows and buy merch, um, it goes towards shit like this. I went canoeing. Took my, took my shirt off, obviously. Went canoeing. Saw some people in life jackets. And I'm like, life jackets? What are they? And I'm like, oh, I'm smoking pot on a canoe. I don't know how to boat. I think I remember how to swim, but... I was fine, regardless. Um, You guys, before I get started too much, I don't have any big dates to say, so I'm just going to say this. Sam Tripoli is a hilarious comedian. He was someone I have always looked up to, comedically, not, you know, racially. Because who would want to be Armenian? You guys, he, when I got to the comedy store, he he was just like getting in there. I remember this waitress, Lauren pelts she was like they were like flirting with each other with like that mean flirting that people do and then he walked away and she goes god i want to fuck him and i was like wow but he would do this bit about about um a handicapped stripper stripper and a i hear noises out here i'm on the back porch i mean literally the backyard is in is in the is like some grass and then water its own private oh this place is amazing also, thank you in Minnesota to everyone who came out, especially Thursday, who gave me tons of weed on Thursday. I maybe not need any more for the rest of the week. It was perfect out here. If I had gotten mushrooms, I probably would have done those today. <laughs> or, or maybe tonight, actually. It's warm. It finally got warm. The first two days were cold, and now it's fucking beautiful. It was 72, 73 out here. Oh, I got to do this Airbnb more often. I found an apartment in New York, you guys. Just so you know. So anyway, back to Sam Tripoli, this joke about handicapped strippers, and it was like, he was my version of like, look, I don't go to strip clubs, I didn't at the time, and you know what, since then I don't really like him either. But Sam Tripoli, to me, read as a guy who had been to strip clubs, and I wanted to have his version of it. You understand? Like comedically, artistically, I want to hear someone who's been through it do their version of it, comedically. And he did that. And he's always been someone who'd come up with tons of material. Super prolific. And guess what? He's also my co-host on Punch Drunk Sports on my sports podcast, which, by the way, if you're too into sports, it's only like 20% sports. The rest is just shit talking. Um, But he's releasing a CD, everybody. It's called Believe in Yourself, and it's going to be on iTunes on May 20th. That's Tuesday. It's going to be available on iTunes everywhere. You can pre-order it right now. I'm pretty sure. Go get it. Believe in Yourself. I've heard it, and it's great. Some of his best bits are on there. Oh, I had a fire pit out here. I sat in the fire pit last night. (sighs) Drank some wine. Fucking watched the fire, you guys, by the lake. It was awesome. Believe in yourself. It's an amazing CD by Sam Tripoli. Buy it on iTunes. Guys, you should support great comedy. And he hasn't released anything in forever. And he's a great underrated comic. I'm telling you, you're not going to be disappointed if you go get that. It's dirty. It's dark. I'm trying to think if he has any clean, not dark stuff, but I don't think so. (laughs) But you guys will love it. So it was recorded live in Edmonton, so all Canadians should get it. But it's released live in America, so all Americans should get it. By the way, my Chinese dates, my Shanghai and around there dates are on my website. And the Hong Kong dates are 
Well, they're up, but they're not on Laugh Stub yet. So they're on a different site. Hong Kong Comedy. Go to that. Um, all right. So anyway, you guys, on today's episode, so get Believe in Yourself by Sam Tripley right now. If it cost $40, it would be too little. But it would probably not cost nearly that much. 10 What is it? $10? Um, yeah, and I guarantee you, it won't. that money won't go to the bank. Sam Tripley is using that money to live, to pay his rent. Um, so on this episode, I wanted to interview David Tell. I've been wanting to interview him for a while. And I never know, since he's one of the, like, the kinds of guys you look up to, everybody looks up to him comedically. It's like I feel bad about asking people to do my podcast, to bother them. But he seemed to like hinting out one day that he wanted to do it outside the cellar. So I asked him, and he's like, yeah, sure, I'd love to do it. I was like, sure, anytime. And he goes, well, let me, I've got some stuff to promote that's coming out in a few months or five months. He goes, let's do it then. So fine. Anyway, so the stuff he had to promote, I was gone in L.A. It's his special, which everyone should download. You can watch it on the Comedy Central stand-up app. Um, and his show, Comedy Underground. So I figured this is the way I do it to help my friends promote stuff is, you know, I do a regular podcast with them, and I'll just release it on the day that it's, you know, so if I, if I record somebody tomorrow and they're releasing a CD in November, I'll just wait till November and release it then. It's just a discussion. And the introduction I'll do new. So I wanted to get Dave to talk about his giving up drinking. And Dave was not comfortable doing the podcast alone. He wanted Metzger and Okerson to be there for him. One, to promote the Comedy Underground, the stand-up series that he hosts on Comedy Central. 1 a.m. every Saturday night for the next two weeks. Uh, also available on the Comedy Central app. But 1 a.m. on Saturday night on Comedy Central. Um, so he said, how about we get some guys, you know, so I'll be comfortable and also... Uh, you know they'll be on the show so we'll promote it and i was like yeah okay so those guys i know they both looked up to him and they went on the road with him a little bit too i know jay has i don't know about kurt anyway i still somehow thought i could finagle david tell into giving it up about quitting drinking and getting deep like that okerson was like no you never will i should have gotten him alone i should have gotten him alone and if i knew i wasn't going to get that shit i should have just stayed on one thing like make it all about new york or make it all about bums or just all about shooting comedy or something. But because I'm fucking overwhelmed with fucking reverence for this guy, I couldn't do it. So it's a failure on my part as a interviewer. Still a funny episode. You can't go wrong with Metzger and Okerson and Attell. I mean, you cannot go wrong. Um, I was worried that my, my thing broke. It fell. And the connector, the, the cover of it popped off. And I was like, uh-oh. Am I not going to be able to record this? Um, but I tried it. I risked it. And it worked. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry. I didn't get anything specific topic-wise. We talked about bums a little bit. We talked about shooting comedy a little bit. We made some jokes. Talked about Donald Sterling. But overall, it was a swing and a miss. So, ladies and gentlemen, Ari Shafir Skeptic Tank, episode 167. Oh, and by the way, that Storyteller show, it's not going to be August 8th. It's going to be September. I think the first or second week of September. We're going to do them then. Um, so if you made plans for August 8th, keep those plans because I might be shooting my next special on that or around that date. I'm trying to do it at the Comedy Store. We'll see if that'll happen. We'll see if that'll happen. I think some people are like, well, Gerard just did one there, so it's kind of copying. I'm like, it's not copying. It's my, fucking my home. And that's the most comfortable place I'll ever be doing stand-up. I don't give a shit about... You guys know how I talk about com comparison, right? Comparison is a thief of joy. So just do your special wherever you want to. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Ari Shafir Skeptic Tank, episode 167. Swing and a miss. It could be 168. I think it's 167, though. Swing and a miss with David Tell and also Big J. Okerson and Kurt Metzger. Guys... Yeah, every once in a while they come after me with like music we, I use. Can we put speakers on that Jeep <laughs> so everybody can hear out here at this uh, freak first. Nick? <laughs> um, welcome, welcome to the show. Oh. Okerson, Metzger, and Attell are here. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. I'm so, I'm glad we could get this done at some at some place. <laughs> Thanks for moving it outdoor to the stand. <laughs> ah, fresco. I like how bundled up you are. <laughs> yeah. 61 degree weather. I feel chilly. Really? Yeah. Jacket weather. No, I left my sweatshirt somewhere. It's not a good story. It's but not you wear, interesting. But you said you used to go jacket over just a shirt. Interesting. That's very 
That's well, very young it's girl of you. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's middle school. <laughs> it's middle school. It's, yeah, when you don't know any better, shorts and a full coat. Right, it's my, a boy who likes jacket. I and pull the it. sleeves over my hands so I don't have to touch people <laughs> during the square dancing. I like, Ari, how you're not wearing headphones, so we're really going on faith that this is all coming out. Yeah, man. I like that. When God has blessed you in the past, it's well, not going to be any different. the band's kicking in, so I have to go in a minute. I have to <laughs> sing. <laughs> Dave, goes, you do, I get the feeling you do not like doing podcasts. I, you know what? I, I've done about fifty hours of podcast in the last three weeks. So yeah. I came to it late, but I came to it hard. <laughs> you did them all, right? You did the whole LA run. I did the LA podcast. I worked my way through the uh, the Midwest. Yeah, where did you I did the, the Rooster Report? Okay. I did. Yeah, um, nice. That's a good uh, one. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. dot com. I did all of them. <laughs> Do you guys get here. hit up in every city you go to for podcasts? Well, there is this podcast in every town. I like that. Yeah. I get hit up to call into podcasts That's a lot. Call into them? And then they harass me if I like can't make their fucking phone call to their podcast. Do you talk to their producer slash mother on the phone first and then they <laughs> Oh Kurt, you should tell them about the the guy like that's a, such a great like every comic probably has that guy, the guy we started with in Philly who gets mad. He's like, You want a big opportunity like to be in this oh, movie? Yeah. Oh, and then, and then you get, and then, but then you like when you don't answer because you know it's bullshit. He's like, "Hey, you don't fucking answer." No, do you know what? I got back to him, and, and then, then he didn't get back to you. No, right? then he told me like, "Oh, thanks, but you're not right for this." Like he wanted what? me to call back so he could tell yeah, what's me. What's the story? I didn't have the credit. Tell him what's we'll him of the guy though. This fucking guy we used to do comedy with. I should probably just say his name because who yeah, gives okay. a shit? Well, he changed it. <clears throat> I don't know what his real name is, but we knew him as Michael Rage. Like a rage? Yeah, the raging bull of comedy. Okay. You got to tell sense. me again what it Italian? is, though, for real, because I, I want to find his videos again. I'm going to guess Italian? It, no, he's a Jewish guy that is seems he? Italian. Yeah. Was he Jewish? Yeah. He's very tan. He's got a Rich Voss thing to him, but if Rich Voss just went fucking total rogue, just like idiotic, <laughs> like tucks in his... He like More buys... He, but he wears like, you know, he's from Philly... Or Atlantic City, I guess, but so he wears like you know like Eagles jerseys, like tucked into jeans, like <laughs> yeah. that look, and like yeah, uh, yeah. So he mean, always has some like Russian girl he ordered like on his he's, arm. He's, he's, he's got I a lot of jewelry. Never even, like hated his guts or anything, but one thing that sucked about it, he would steal jokes. I, mean, I that, thought he sucked. They had like a comedy contest. No, I meant as a hum- I didn't. I didn't hate his guts as a human being. I oh yeah, I remember when he, when, he, when, he, when he judged the comedy, we gave him a zero for material because he, he, we killed. So we were like, he, we gave him like a ten on killing delivery and a ten on delivery, and then it was a like material. And I gave him a zero. I was like, why? Because he did a joke that Laura Keitlinger does very specifically, but he thought he was stealing from a source that no one would catch in a black. Because it was club. A, yeah, it was a black. Oh, right. Laura so it was funny. So right, I called him. He goes, so he goes, why did you? Uh, he goes, why did you give me a zero for uh, material? I go. Because you just did that, a Laura Keitlinger joke. He goes, what? And I go, yeah, the thing about the crack babies. He goes, Keitlinger's doing that now? Because then, then he addressed her like she was too much of a household name. Like, you know, I was like, shut up. <laughs> Here so, we are on the east side, which is almost Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> this is for the kids who, they're hip, but they also have to work. Well, These are for the kids whose parents, you know, they're a little worried. Yeah, they I get them in a nice place. Are. Yeah. Well, wait, yeah, let me I tell you the first like tell you the story. Up. What? So oh, so oh. he gets in touch with me on over. Facebook. No, no. <laughs> so he gets in touch with me on Facebook. I have these people from Philly who are like, hey man, you still write? Because they want it they want me to like finish their, their project. They have half an idea that I'm gonna finish oh, what's for them. The one with the guy, uh, well wait, wait, I'll be finished one. Yeah, so yeah. I'm gonna finish their their half an idea for them all the time mm-hmm. and then I'm gonna pitch it with my connections. <laughs> yeah, right. There's no talk of I money. Pitch his volleyball t- movie to Rogan. Yeah, it's it's no <laughs> what, what, what should I tell him? It's always like it's a big opportunity for me to help them, but no mention of how it helps me. Yeah. So so I'm like, I'm busy all this shit, and then he gets impatient in the same day of sending the message. Say, hey, man, get back to me. You know, like, <laughs> so I get back. I'm like, all right, man, what is this? But, like, hey, what's the money up and right now? I want to know what I'm getting for this. And he's like, it's a movie. We got be- He's dropping all these names at me that I never heard of. Kev. <laughs> yeah, and uh, he goes, call me up. So I'm like, all right. So I f- when I have a chance to call him finally... It's to do punch-ups on this movie script that they have all this funding for, supposedly. Like, some real heavyweights are behind this movie. Okay? He goes, but you, he goes if your credits are up the to guys snuff, who own White House we'll talk about getting... You, if my credits are up to snuff, this thing he harassed me to, to get back to him, we'll talk about it. So I go, well, I've never written a movie before, man. I, I'm doing punch-ups here. And he goes, ah, you know what, man? I don't think you're right for it, but uh, I'll what? keep you in mind. He wanted me to get back to him just so he could tell me. Uh, basically, it's like, hey, I'm Sorry, doing there's stuff, a, there's too. There's a homeless guy doing breakdancing behind oh, you. Oh, they're the it's greatest. I only knew. What focus. the... F- Whoa, full flips. If wow. you only knew this was a podcast and not... 
video. I think he really thought this was like. A Would you believe me if I told you that's Tupac? He oh is God, alive. <laughs> By the way, it's a constant in L.A. How is your homeless? Like, just bothering you in the middle of doing something. They don't really bother you. They'll lead you with a long story. They they do that better because it's more writers there. So they'll give you, like, a seven-minute lead-up to the, hey, can I have a quarter? There's Nikki Glaser. Dave, you're you're great because you you give the homeless, like, you're very generous to them and so aggressively mean at the same time, which I love. Go ahead. Explain. (laughs) I love you. It's like, here, go. It's almost like you're pushing them away with $10. No, because they're regulars. It's not like it's like like a special guest homeless. It's like they're there every night. They know when I'm going on at the comedy seller. They're there. They're clocking me. And they wait. They know you give them out. Yeah, because they know. Yeah, you give. Yeah, Yeah, because I'm a sucker. That you can say I'm a sucker. I was socialist (laughs) parents. Does it feel like having your own paparazzi following you ever? <laughs> I'm trying to make a phone call. It's amazing. Guys, I'm always I'm, I'm always blown away that the regulars do come to you. It's like they have the shortest memories ever. Yeah, like within a couple hours they'll come back. I've heard the whole fake they're rap. Like turkeys. Oh yeah, you they kick will. A turkey in the face. They'll oh, they'll, come hit, back you, to you, in they'll hit you on the same night. Yeah. Really. Oh yeah, absolutely. You already, like, you already asked me, but then you think, oh yeah, they have no idea. I they do say that, and it doesn't break their stride at all. No, they don't so, like, care. What'd you say last time? Well, <laughs> if we can get back to your um, passive aggressive attack on me and the homeless, <laughs> me, Ali Baldwin, and the rest of the Ali Baldwin's <laughs> in this town have had it with these people. No, I'm sick of them. Like you said, it's the same spiel, and then they want to hang out, like. Like, for somehow, their their charm has, like, gotten you into this inner circle. And it's like, I know you just want money. You're playing me. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's so, it makes you feel but very you whorish. Them, huh? And my urban friend, you know, he, he says, you shouldn't <laughs> give them any money. Yeah. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And he goes, they're all con men. And I'm like, come on. They're not all they con are. men. That guy with the silver hair. Which one's that? Silverhead? Outside the se- he's, yeah, not a, he's, he's not, not a panhandler. Silver. He's not he, a he panhandler. Pay. Yeah, he does, he does, he'll, do like, he'll shine your shoes or not. Well, that's a skill, though. He's, yeah. he's giving. Yeah. No, yeah. Dude, Even if they're sneakers, he'll Some shine. Some of those shoe shine guys take a insane amount of pride of what they're able to what do. They're doing. They are, with, yeah. I mean, it's weird. <laughs> that well, guy sells cigarettes for eight bucks a piece. That's brilliant. Well, he's not homeless. Yeah. Uh-huh. He's what? a businessman. Yeah, that guy's he's a great. very good businessman. He's making 100% profit on his investment. You don't want to walk to the end of the block? Let me help you. No, it ain't got nothing to do with that, man. Well, the shoe it's, shine it's, guys. It's, yeah. it's double the price of those cigarettes. Yeah. But it's um, six to seven dollars less than a pack of oh. cigarettes here. Well, because why? He buys them by the carton? Like, but it's somewhere else. Like the cash machines. Yeah. Can I throw this out? <laughs> they have that table there for banking. I've never seen anyone bank, I've seen everything else. Baby changing, a sandwich. <laughs> um, just like I've seen a lot of uh, cards. A guy with reading cards, you know, yeah. psychic tarot cards. I've never seen any a st- banking. A stack of customs papers. Yeah. I saw a guy making a sandwich there, which I assume I helped him buy because that's like their little, like, you know, that's like their homeless kitchen. Have you ever offered the homeless food and they, and they reject they it? They hate it. That's yeah. fucking Do they really? So, oh. They're like, oh, I'm not. I'm, yeah. Violently gl- shitty sometimes. Glute free, you know, like they have a weird thing. Hi. It's, that makes me think they are con men. I yeah, no shit. And, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know the homeless. I'm supposed to feel Out bad west. for where yeah, they are in, in Alaska too. Yeah, they're angry. They really are. Who are they're Native American homeless or Native? Oh, Native they're American in Alaska. Yeah, oh, Alaska. the Canadian natives are. They'll try to mug Native you for a general. Slurpee, dude. They're just mad at you. Oregon, uh, Seattle, like all the train routes. That's where you see the natives. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> right. Yeah. But they because uh, that's where they started living because of the no, no. But I, in? that's funny because I saw it in Alaska, heavy duty. But I assume they were just out of season fishermen or canners. <laughs> but those natives will take. They'll take a sandwich or something, right? The native ones. The natives? Yeah, Don't maybe. they use every part of the sandwich? Just, dude, I was told. <laughs> I was Even told the crust. No, <laughs> I was told uh, when I was in Alaska by the people who ran that club out there, or, or, or people involved in it. At least they were like, "Don't get in any ca- like look at your cab driver for you. Don't get in with like native drivers." And they're just like fucking what? like really. They just fucking are full of fury and hate. And they're just like, and they're used to dealing with soft ass Canadians who are like respectful automatically. You know? Canadians are all lumberjacks. They're not soft. No, but they're polite. They're, they're soft, polite. and they're, they're not going to like dismiss you. Uh, you know, eth- ethnically based. Yeah. Even for their own safety. When I was playing the Mall of America, a native <laughs> came up to me um, and he said, and I was, I was just really like, it was one of those, like, just like after a bad show. Yeah. And he goes, I'll buy you a beer if you smile. He said that to you? Yeah. And I go, oh. why are you using the white man tricks on me? Yeah. I'm sure that's how they got him to give up his land. I would, I would think that's a white smile. man trick so much as a Puerto Rican hitting on a white girl in the street trick. 
<laughs> like, well, come on, Cameron smile, Lee baby. Just want some attention. Oh. Uh, a nice. big ass bitch like you by herself. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are, four men. <laughs> Ari, how many? Yep. How, how long has this podcast been going? Because I am late to the game. <laughs> you, know, oh, you mean in general? It's going like three years, maybe. Three years. So, Something would you like say that. this is your hundredth show? It, it is my no. Jay just had a hundredth. We show. just okay, actually did a hundred shows. Mine is will be one sixty-seven. Here, you guys, you're all podcast guys. Right? We have to do something, Dave. You're like you're like. Uh, the Avengers or something. Yeah. New York's <laughs> podcast. Like if there's Podcast Magazine, every week one of you would be in it. We would probably be on <laughs> yeah. the cover. On the cover? Yeah. Do you listen to podcasts? Or no, not really. I never listen to any podcasts. I listen to music. Why would, you let, why would you say that to the listeners? I, well, they can listen to it. I don't give a <laughs> <Okay>. shit. <laughs> I don't listen to podcasts. I listen to talk radio. Talk radio. Oh, Ron and Fez. Ron and Fez, uh, Stern. How about an Imus? Nope. Well, in does anyone years, listen to IMS? Does anyone for real? With the amount of time that I listen to to Besides radio, besides that girls' basketball team, does anyone <laughs> listen to IMS? Between five five days a week of Ron and Fez and three days of Stern, it's all. I don't need more than that That's in a, a week. I don't need. I, I never. I never listen to everything in a week ever. So it's like it's more than I need. What it's about a, a comic work. book update show with some of your favorite nerds? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what I mean. That's why I can't like some of the I favorite. Can't, the, the favorite Creek in the Cave comedians. Is I'll listen that, to parts. Ask, is it that competitive in the podcast universe? No. They tried to start being competitive, and then they realized it's not competitive at all. People okay. have unli- unlimited time to listen to stuff. Okay. They go yeah. on binges, and they catch up to a podcast, and they start another one. You should really tell the listeners at home, you didn't add in these applause. <laughs> That's from the show going on. It's not like you said, hey. <laughs> Fourth wall, man. Put some sound effects. <laughs> I wonder how now much baby that crying, wah, wah. You're not going to do that. That's what I would do on my corny cast. <laughs> Captain Cornball. I'm on Corncast corn- now. With my <laughs> <podcast>. <laughs> Tell, just Captain Cornball. It's, ama- it's amazing, though, to even have the idea. Like, your podcast is en route. En route. Well, it is monetized, actually, already. To the point. I mean, that's fucking pretty amazing, man. Yeah. I couldn't even wrap my brain around the idea of I love it. I like my podcast making me money, and it's doing okay. It's I mean, crazy. It paid for me to have a New York apartment last year. Paid your way through school. It was your stripping. Got <laughs> <laughs> me from college. <laughs> the combination of stripping. Still doing yourself on a stage. Why didn't that Duke porn star think to make a podcast? <laughs> now, is it getting warmer, or is it all the great podcasts pushing us towards the sun? <laughs> <laughs> the heat is on, man. Huh? Do you think it's all the delicious talk? Pushing us slowly to it. <laughs> would you never? You would never do one like a weekly one. Don't ever say never. <laughs> no, no, I, I don't. I li- the thing that I think drives a great podcast is the ability to talk about yourself. And I really don't. I hate you don't it. have that at all. I hate you. It. Never hate share myself. about yourself. I hate myself. So yeah, I don't know how you guys do it. I, I hate myself too. But I kind of tell people that you can see what would interest others in the things you hate, can't you? Yeah, well, how I, much more do we have to give, guys? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Honestly. <laughs> I mean, really, I really do. No, that's feel a real like, concern. I get that. Do you feel that too? Yeah, we're I thought it was a generational right. thing. What? I feel like the guys who started without ever sharing stuff, like never needing to, You're like a Danny K or uh, Slayton types. <laughs> yeah, Danny yeah. K, sure. <laughs> just straight jokes. <laughs> like, yeah, they don't know how to like. <clears throat> I don't know. Open up more. They don't like doing it. Yeah, no. It used to be like you know you do the you do the radio, you do the gig, and then you know you're you're done. You're a nobody, and now it's like all day long. It's promotion, and then it's talk, and then it's more whatever. I don't I like think that. that yeah, well, but yeah, I, I think you're too good a comic. That's the problem. I think if you were like in the, OK, the in the OK world, then you'd be like, this is cool. I'm kind of performing all day, you know? I, I just yeah, need maybe, a platform I, 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 to say, leave Donald Sterling alone. <laughs> yeah, I, I He's a wonderful man. Slant on <laughs> Kurt, yeah, Kurt's like, you know, it's hilarious, man. What? It is really funny with that Donald Sterling thing, like how much outwardly. Uh, by the way, I still do outwardly defend what? that. I still do defend that he should. Own he that make team. Him sell his business. I think he should own that team for as long as he wants to own that team. No problems. But uh, it was hilarious. That I was like, you're taking a guy's private words and blah blah blah, and then he just to go on Anderson Cooper and just yeah. sit in that position <laughs> and just be like, yeah, you yeah. got it, dude. I was saying what was the funniest yeah. things. I watched that any better. I watched I, that interview I, yeah. with closed captioning, oh. and there was a mistake made by the person typing closed captioning because this made me laugh even harder. It said. Uh, it was like, what? What is Magic Johnson? He goes, he had, I guess he said he has full-blown AIDS. But they wrote, they wrote full-bone AIDS. Full AIDS, and <laughs> it, it wasn't even like it was like, like O-W-N, like they forgot the L. It was like so, someone heard and typed full B-O-N-E AIDS. <laughs> he got full-bone AIDS. And, and looking up at what he's saying, he's like sitting like this. He goes, he's got full-bone AIDS, his arm fucking on the back of the couch. Like, what a dickhole. There's nothing funnier than old Jews talking. I'm like, oh, I guess he just is racist. When he made love to all he's those ladies. Old, he's an old man. Man, 
and he, uh, you know, I, I really do think that he should have to uh, confront his racism by managing a Models or a Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> Tamara, you're late again. He has to constantly deal with. <laughs> They are people. They have problems. Well, I get it. I don't get what. Uh, I mean, with the phone, I don't get what he's supposed to apologize for with the phone call because it wasn't like he made an announcement. Yeah, somebody just recorded him. So, like, what's yeah, that's the- what that's what I'm saying. I should have gotten to where it is. Is like- it like smoking at home? Should he have opened a window and not done it around a child? <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I'm going to say something racial. Let me just crack a window. Let here. some of the racism out. <laughs> well, that chick is such garbage. Yeah, but she, she, she thinks garbage. she'll do Playboy. I really do think. Like, what's her next move? I think she's too old for Playboy. She's already she? 30, 30, 31? No, no, no. They've been they've been holding it up. No, really? but there's no. Yeah. But, uh, but Play, Playboy's other way. But that chick, if she's going to do Playboy, she'll take a million dollars and. They'll give her a million dollars just fuck some dude. Like, no, that's what I'm pointing to. No, I don't think she'll do that. She's not big enough for Playboy. The guy who t- went out with Sterling. Dude, that girl who... The, the Mark Wiener chick did porn immediately. It's amazing how fast they'll jump in the porn. They really don't was give a fuck. Hotter? Uh, it was she hotter? She was already in porn. It was hot because she was, she was a dumb... No, she was that classy. No, she, no, was she, was, she was... So, hook her. No. No, she wasn't. I think she was just a town... Like, she was in college She was some college girl. You know, Mark Wiener. No, you're thinking Elliot Spitzer was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you remember that classy chick that was uh, JFK's secretary? And he'd be like, hey, but she'd have to give head to his his uh, assistants? No, I don't remember that, really. Yeah, he'd be like, if she just wrote a book, she waited until everyone was dead. Yeah. To, so nobody would have their... Would be hurt by it. And or then to, she Or to her, call out that it's bullshit, too. Right. Call out what... Possibly. The, she waited until everybody was bullshit. dead so she can call out bullshit, too. I mean... I think she just was a classy girl. But you can't like, think of a thousand reasons why she would make this up. Well, what does it help her now at this point when she's almost money, money on a book? <laughs> Mo- a book. I don't you get know. I think, I think it's a, a fun I money, think for sound, kid, money for your kids. She money. sounded pretty credible. Kitten feed. The fact does that, that she didn't. your image on JFK, though. <laughs> no, everybody <laughs> so knew. What's the big deal? Yeah, everybody knew he did that. Yeah, hey. No, but she had the class to wait till it wouldn't fucking bother, somebody, bother one of them. Yeah, I like that. Screech should have done that. Screecher done what? With his book. Wait until the whole... Hypocrites, guys. Who really cares? I mean, no. I don't. Well, you know, that's the larger issue. I don't give a yeah, shit. Yeah, well, that's the big point. It's like, it's just all chatter. And, I mean... Uh, you know, I mean, uh, I know this this podcast is basic. It's for and about stories, so... It's not for and about oh. stories. It's usually <laughs> about a topic. I wanted to talk to you about your drinking, but I don't uh, know if you've been oh, done the you're like that. the deep. You're like the deep guy. I want to talk about Comedy Underground and thank you all for doing it. I yeah, think we're all we're on at different episodes, so that's kind of cool. Is I it got. getting ratings? How's it doing? Yeah, how is it doing? Ratings, that's an old man stuff. <laughs> <laughs> tweets and page views. <laughs> yes. Is it getting enough tweets and page views? The it's tweeting the app, has right? been amazing by both the comics and the fans. We got that down through the help of Christine and, of course, the comics. We have wrangled the comics into a force, almost like a tsunami of tweets. Yeah. Now... <laughs> <laughs> ratings at 1 a.m. on a Saturday. What is a good rating there? I have no idea. <laughs> exactly. What is it? Can I take on the third rerunning of Turn on FX? <laughs> Can I take on Pop Secret, the last 20 minutes, when we realize <laughs> that, that it is a, story? Uh, <laughs> can I take, you know, it's funny what you're up against at that hour, you know? What well, are the SVU's 13th episode? Wait, it's Saturday night. That's Saturday Night Live, right? No, I think it's, it's right over after. Uh, it's right after It's SNL. Apollo. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm going head-to-head. Well, it's the Lil Rel episode. That'll be the decider. Well, we already had the Lil Rel episode, and I have to say I thank him a lot for doing the show. He's not a dirty comic, and it was about dirty. And, uh, Huge, you know, he right? He did a good job. Yeah. He really did. Were you trying to get it to go dirty or just become dirty? I think I wanted it for the dirty comics to be able to do their dirty jokes, because otherwise I was like, you know, there's plenty of middle-of-the-road guys, but now that I see it, it's really just about, like, the best jokes, you know? That, yeah. And everybody can always just just balls him. comedy. Really, it didn't balls. have to be necessarily yeah. like pussy. The first time you told me about, you were like, "No, it's just a show. We're just doing a show. We're televising it." Mm. And then you became more like uncensored. No, that was the no. The whole That's thing was I to be. It. Oh, really? Because it, it was uncensored. Yeah, I that mean, was the thing. It was to be uncensored. Yeah. By the yeah. new definition of how comedy works, if it's not a stammering, autistic twit with True. your glasses on, then that's crazy dirty. How many alt comics did you get for this? Get no, I, I told him I said no uh, storytellers and no alts. You were on the fence. Really? So I was yeah. like, I want Ari to do it because I know you, you're a ballsy comic. Like, you really do, like, dig in and, like, you know, you take you don't take the easy road. You've actually yeah. made a good decision, though, to be less dirty over the last couple of years, when haven't I met you? You, yeah, you told me you were racial. Racial. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. Like, you're sending, um, can, it, what, the, what, can you describe that thing, the sending people back to Africa? <laughs> that video? I mean, like that, you know. <laughs> 
That's what we call a career killer. Outreach. <laughs> I mean, is it true that you play Amistad in reverse so you yeah. can enjoy it? <laughs> I don't know what Sterling is your manager or your landlord, but either way, he's opening for me all on the road. They should ask them the what's funny. Well, this Ari Shafir kid, he's got this video out. There. <laughs> I watch it every morning. It as I put up when Ari neck. had those AIDS, <laughs> <laughs> I love that guy. He sounds like uh, fucking Danny DeVito on Always Sunny. Who the actual Sterling? Sterling, Sterling? sounds I like Doctor. Well, no, not his voice, but the shit he says. He sounds like uh, Doctor Mantis Toboggan. Mantis <laughs> Toboggan, what's that from? That was the fake doctor uh, Frank Reynolds was in oh, Always yeah, Sunny. Yeah, yeah. Were you? You've got the AIDS. That's a good show. <laughs> I like when. Um, like, cause he's a Hollywood guy. Like, he he must have been around since the '70s, so he must like know all like all those really cool old Hollywood people. Who are we talking about, Sterling or Frank? Sterling. <laughs> yeah, they must have been like you know uh, Jack Nicholson, Jack Nicholson, and uh, you know uh, uh, a Jamie, a Jimmy Con, Jimmy Con. He, he must have known all those guys. He was rich, you know. He's been rich for a long time. He's a billionaire, guys. You know what he's that a is? Billionaire with cancer. I just don't think he cares. Who's a billionaire with cancer? Sterling, Sterling. He has cancer? Yeah. Oh, oh pray that? for him. Yeah. Ass cancer. My, well, my prayers are with him. <laughs> Mine too. You ever get a homeless guy yell at you? Like be angry at you that you don't give them the right amount of... Oh, oh I... Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I've had them... You can look at me. I whatever. get pretty aggressive with homeless when they get out of line. I mean, I really don't take no shit off no homelesses. Well, there's I saw aggressive panhandling. That's what you guys are... Yeah, that's what we're talking about here. When the when the police want them out of the way, dude, it's funny how aggressive they'll fucking be with them. Though I saw, I, oh yeah, they'll that was a. Police? I want Everybody's to tell you this anyway. I thought you'd find this interesting. You know that? You, do you hear the thing on Tenth Avenue or uh, Avenue D and Sixth Street with uh, the other night, Sunday night, like uh, a twenty year old kid like came up. They have video of like he came up behind this old Asian guy, sixty three year old, and, and no, not surprised, not, like physically beat him to death. Why? Just with did. This- with his no, hands it, it just came behind him. What like, is he, like, a young Marky Mark? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I mean, it was a vicious, like, beat, so he beats him to death, on he kills him. Avenue. On Avenue. On Avenue D. Oh. Um, well, and 6th Street. It. Yeah, it's, it's when you get over to Alphabet City, it gets funky over there. But, like, it's, uh... But, so they had him in the precinct right across the street from my apartment. Yeah. And me and uh, Mike Fenoy, our buddy, were watching him, and all the cameras were set up, because they were going to bring him... They, they caught the guy the next day, and they were bringing him out for, uh... To take him to central booking, and man, looking at that fuck, like to see his face, man, I was like, I, I was more like way more affected uh, uh, by it than I thought I would be. Like, see, they just brought him out. You're like, wow, a couple hours ago, this guy like just beat a fucking dude to well, what death. What his face look like? Well, what, just, I, I don't know, man. I actually day. have a picture of it, but like, <laughs> you got to I'll say that was off <laughs> online. Someone put a picture of it online. Oh, I don't believe it. I don't believe that the older Miyagi type Asian couldn't take on this young. Uh, was he on some <laughs> kind of drug? It may have been on a drug. He also was attacked apparently from behind, his, so apparently the crane behind. didn't work. Apparently yeah. his mom, the, the, the 20-year-old kid's mom, said he was on Molly. Black dude. He was on Where, Molly. Oh, by the no way, way. Is that what you're saying Molly. now? He's a brother? Oh, yeah, he's a brother. But he's, who attacks Chinese people? But what's great what is also, I'm planning on. what was sort of, in hindsight, funny, what did yeah. make me laugh, is that when, they pull, when they're bringing him out, you're like, what's this kid going to be, you know, I didn't even think about what he'd be wearing, but he was wearing, like, leather pants with, like, a leather shirt. It was pretty bad. I'm like, where, where, where did they catch this guy? Maybe it was a rough trade uh, club <laughs> thing, and they took it to the street. I thought he came there right from Eddie Murphy's Raw. <laughs> <laughs> well, because he's scumbag. I was backstage at Eddie Murphy's Raw. That's you really will big, not yeah. see that and drive along gag reel. On <laughs> ride along. Ride, ride along. along. <laughs> Sorry. Get your Kevin Hart movies right. Sorry, uh, that, that is remarkably vicious, though, to just like to, to have a gag like reel with your hands. To have a- <laughs> <laughs> I, with you. I mean, either put it in the movie or don't. Well, do you remember the guy that that pushed an old Chinese guy into the subway? Oh, uh, like a remember him? Is that the one they were taking? <laughs> I, com- I yeah, commemorate. But, but that that guy, it, it turned out when the real story came out, the old Chinese guy was drunk and belligerent and like aggressively attacking people. And they shoved him. And then the guy shoved him. It wasn't just that he randomly bias crimes the real story. Yeah, so I, there's always more. However they want. Well, you're from LA, Ari. What would be the equivalent of the subway pushing? Pushing a guy into, uh, I guess, a panel show? Hard to <laughs> 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 <be> right back. <laughs> An MSNBC panel. Uh, they pushed me into At Midnight. <laughs> <laughs> I had to come up with funny I I lost my balance. I didn't know where I was. <laughs> oh, do you watch At Midnight? By the way, I have not seen it yet. You would I be heard a great it's okay. addition to that. 
<laughs> I, no, I don't understand. I talked to Chris Hardwick. He's. It's, I'm telling you, like they what? pump it out every night. It's 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 a real deal. It's getting. It's ratings. for younger than really? me. Really? Because yeah, you know what you know what they do. Do you the know the idea of the show? Like, it's like it's like Chelsea lately jokes, right? But like, but do you know? No, it's, it's about twi- it's about the. Yeah, do you know what they web? do with the show? It's what? like they it, they do the show at midnight. Yeah, and it's all web based, so all that stuff gets tweeted out, and they play the games and stuff like that. So it becomes when you wake up in the morning, it's all the main trending things are from that show. Oh wow. right. So for people that I swear to you, I feel bad. I'm sorry, fans of any sort, but it's like. People apparently wake up in the morning and give a fuck about what's trending in the Twitter world. I don't get it. Yeah, that's I don't old. personally get it. I, that's yeah, what that means. I'm old. They had to outlaw Bieber being trending because it would be the top, all the top ten. It would be Bieber, Bieber Rocks. I love Bieber. Justin Bieber. Who outlawed it? Twitter. The, oh, I think it this. You, like, the Supreme trend. Court made a decision. <laughs> Twitter stock is down, guys. The People VB. People V Bieber. <laughs> PVB. <laughs> uh, I like to reference about. People V Bieber. That what? show is yeah. that show is the, uh, the generation. This is your generation's uh, show, guys. No, way. I worked on the proto pilot that they turned into that. What, For what? pilot? It, At it was called. We couldn't even come up by <laughs> At midnight. It, yeah, it was me and um, fuck, I'm blank. Tony Kameen. Yeah, this dude Chris Pataki. Like and it wasn't right. web based, but it was the exact same show, not web based. And ours was called Tonight's Funniest, and we couldn't come up with a better title than that. That's how much we suck. <laughs> I like that better, Tonight's Funniest. <laughs> Yeah, but it had the That's same thing, like the red light comes down, and I think they chopped it up and made it that web show. Late night laughy oh. laughs with Kurt Metzger. <laughs> oh, in the my game. God. <laughs> yeah, but like my girl like, like will sit and watch it. If you're really? a certain age, you could. I just can't follow. Yeah, but I thought you were all over the tweets and all that. No? You no. don't do the tweet, you do the Facebook. Yeah, I, I'm not. But you're all over it. All over what? I mean, you're on that thing all day. You're on all Yeah, day. but that's not because of my tech savvy. That's because of no, my. No, I know. Uh, Jabbering. So, so you're saying this is your chief Joseph? This is your all fight no more forever. Throwing out some uh, native. You don't mind me throw some native? Uh, I prefer it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just on a reservation last weekend. By the way, that girl that Chris is with, she yeah. was sitting there at the comics table. <laughs> I just looked at her. I'm like, you're not a comic, are you? Uh, I know she stinks. No she, she doesn't look at nobody. Oh, uh, yeah. She she's doesn't throw you in. I had a long conversation with her. I had a long conversation. She was. Uh, she's from the real world five years ago. And well, now maybe I'm thinking of a different girl. Uh, can- <laughs> can- Cancun, she said. Fallujah. <laughs> she told me she only she did nothing interesting except she kissed a girl on one episode. That's what they got to do. You got to spice it up. You got to do something like that. I guess. I don't know. And they met doing like reality show something for MTV too. You know, what we should ask about this whole twi- Twitter and other stuff. Is the Guy Code guys and then uh, Nikki of Nikki and Sarah? Because that that's the one that that's the fan base. That's where they come. That's I heard. I, I was Nikki told was tonight. Saying. Andrew Schultz's podcast. Him and Sorry. Charlemagne the God. Yeah. Charlemagne, the guy. Co- two Guy Code guys have the number one podcast in podcasts, not in comedy oh, really? podcast. Yeah. In podcasts. I was just on the number one the other day. Adam Carolla. No. Well, no. the number ones no, only last. The number one Joe Rogan. No, they don't last. Bump. Your parents, your no parents way. Have shot them yeah. down. No way. Yeah. Rogan uh, and Corolla are not shot leaving. down. That's what, that's by this, the, this that's kid. Say. By, by Charlemagne. It, Charlemagne the God. Wow. Uh, Charlemagne amazing. the God. That's his <laughs> yeah. name. Charlemagne the, the God. I started this whole yeah. thing by saying he's black. I don't believe it. Did I say he was black? I like. Did I open this by saying he was black? If you ever heard him, he's pretty funny. Charlemagne on. Uh, what do you call it? On Hot 97? Hot 97. No, Hot No way, is that really a child? Oh, is he Donkey of the Day thing? He's a DJ guy, but he's like the funniest of those On World Star Pip Hop, he does Donkey of the Day. Oh. Donkey of the Day. Ass of the well, Day. Let me it'll, tell be like, it'll be like Solange Clean Knowles like the, today would the, be his Donkey of the Day. In the demographic of people who would wait in line for the ugliest sneakers in the universe, they yes. do very fucking well. <laughs> I heard there's some new purple sneakers coming out with <laughs> stars and planets and shit on it. Oh, you got to have that. Them motherfuckers tie themselves. <laughs> I kill a man for them sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> when was that period? People were killing each other for sneakers. It's Yesterday? Uh, from when they came no. out to the present. When was that? <laughs> from, when they came from when they were invented <laughs> till from now. From Jordan's one. <laughs> I wonder if on their podcast they add in like young guy sounds like skateboard tricks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for real? Video game noises. <laughs> Flat brim hat. I said Andrew Schultz is the love child of a uh, of a pair of skinny jeans and a YOLO hat. <laughs> he really is a human podcast. YOLO, isn't he's he? A human Imagine YOLO a hat. Podcast. Good old Schultz hat tilted to the side. Uh, it's not tilted to the side. It is flat. T- oh yeah, tight, overly flat, flat brim. brim. Oh, he always comes correct. 
<laughs> and Schultz really does get whatever black culture is going right now yeah like i'll adopt that a hundred well i like him because i he was well, it blows my mind because yeah. he'll come in and wear clothes where i'm like oh he's dressed like a nerdy uh like white dude but it's like no this is what and then it's like i'll go like oh little wayne and drake are dressed that exact same way tight button down shirts well it's part of the guy code you don't he's, know how guy code works i don't street, you dress up like a, a bitch all the time <laughs> he, he's like a, a fashion bitch He's a street kid, but he has the smell of a charter school. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good kid. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. If you guys are, are you going to rail other comics who aren't here? Because all night long, I didn't sign up for. Who no else wants cool. some? Just passing by. Where's Dave Jeskow? Get him over! I'm going to yell at him now. <laughs> I was at Caroline's doing Adam Carolla's book signing. Have you ever thought of doing a book? I have never thought of it. I've read You've two never books in the last ten years. Real? I always like, think of you as like the most well-read of all. I would have guessed you read a lot of books. Like, it. You know why you think that? Because Ari looks like in uh, Animal House when Donald Sutherland was banging Otter's girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. The, the college professor that sold them pot. <laughs> I just come out with my sweater and no, sh- no, Dude, no yeah. pants on. Do we had a big argument the other day with uh, David Lewis about uh, how many books you've read in your life? Like, I've read a grotesquely low amount of books. What did you think was a ridiculous number of books to have read? Lewis Hundreds? said he read 200 books in his life. Yeah, that, oh, yeah, 200 is easy. It is? Oh, I've read I've read like fucking maybe fifteen books. No way! In your whole life, in my whole even life, even including baby books. It, like, what about college? And and by the way, and two of them were written by Artie Lang. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How many manuals do you think you've done? You know, refrigerator <laughs> to shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> See, what I like about Ari's look is that, like, you, let's say there's an apocalypse. All you yeah. have to do is put a little tape on one of the frames of your glass, <laughs> crack one lens, and you look like you're the uh, bookkeeper the in the apocalyptic <laughs> world. The guy that recharges your iPod. <laughs> oh, written words. I can help you with those. <laughs> the ancient words. The speak, speak times. <laughs> there's a book of spells that was brought into me. Now, this is an old Coke can from the before time. <laughs> Let me good. show you how to... Diesel, let me look. I have that here. Out of the way, cats knocking cats out of the way. <laughs> That's called. Father needs to think. <clears throat> so you said two hundred books for Lewis. He said he, he said hundreds of books. Hundreds of books. And I then when I asked that. him to clarify I think that, Kurt is probably the most well read. Yeah, read. Kurt's read hundreds that of books. Doesn't seem like a huge number of books over your lifetime. Over your lifetime, you read hundreds. That's that seems you like read. But I, 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 I bet you also and read not me, fast. Not, my, not at NYU, you don't. Adele, how many at books NYU? would you, have you read over the course of your life? Were you an English major? No, Adele. I would have film and television. Would you say Adele. would you've read hundreds of books in your entire life? No. I no. Wish I could say that. What do you think? I've read That's 15 important. books. How many tweets have you read? <laughs> now, if we add those up, that could be a, quite a few books. Oh, right? shit. So. Me and Adele are both going to be wearing high heels in fucking the Bronx <laughs> one day. She's selling ass. <laughs> Me and her together with our fucking stupid, illiterate mind. What about a book called How to Sell Ass? Would you read that? <laughs> <laughs> Pimp yeah. Lot. Then I would read 16 books so I could make money. How about what kind of book do you like? A fiction? A nice uh, biography? Oh, autobiography? Me too. Biography. Everyone get I'm into that. Fiction. What about a fucking work of art? What about a real book? With what? Like what? Like what? Like what? What's a Catch work of art? Catch of the Great Gatsby. That oh, book stinks. That one. Fucking The Road. What about The Road? I read that. That was good as yeah, hell. Why would I do They made a movie that was so sad. Oh, it was, I was way darker. I can't believe you read that. T- I thought that was like a, like a what you call it? When I was reading that, I was like, this was like watching Fox News. In a way. Really? Like, this is like their <laughs> idea. Of what of I read American marriage. Psycho yeah. after I saw the movie. I read The Shining after That'd I saw the movie. One. Pet Cemetery after I saw the movie. I was here a Stephen King uh, guy. No, that was it. Oh. And then, uh, <laughs> How do you you read oh no, misery! Shirts? I did read misery. Do you read him Seven. in a shed wearing flannel. Tell you right. <laughs> read him like sharpening right. a sharpening a hay bale hook. <laughs> Every chapter, smoke another cigarette. <laughs> so, but you like biogra- like show business biographies, like from like I read Marilyn Manson, Jim Morrison, oh, that's cool. um, Jim Morrison's autobiography, um, Malcolm X. We had to read, I think, in school. Where I think I picked it so black people would like me more. Were you like, I'll read it, but I'm being forced to? No, no, I was more like, I'm going to read this so black people. I, dude, I was really like, dude, when I lived in I went uh, a pretty black school. When so I lived I, down south, man, the amount of shit that I got for like reading books, oh really? yeah, was like. I mean, P- I remember getting ganged up on in the like school a, like library. A Bill Hicks joke with no in laughs. The, yeah, in the fourth grade, and they're like, "Look at how thick this book is you read." <laughs> <laughs> Bookie, they're like, "What they're you, like, you reading for?" Yes. I don't read. <laughs> they just get around you, and they, right. and they make you. They go, "Take your shirt off, twist it around your head, spin like a helicopter." <laughs> no, uh, well, that hadn't come out yet. But gold tooth, have. gold tooth, uh, black people yelling. At you no, it wasn't even a fu- the black people were nicer. It was like uh, just hillbillies. Oh really? But that's true. Uh, there is like a 
you know, I'm reading the Flip Wilson by I don't know if you know guys know him. No, yeah, yeah. See yeah. the black guy? He had a huge cock. Yeah. Uh, Geraldine, right? Geraldine and uh, you know, the devil made me do it. And it's the it's really interesting the start of his the road back then, especially for uh he's black, so you know, <laughs> like they couldn't do any like, you know, be one of those things where it's like you have to get to you have to get to like a town. So it'll be like well, the colored people's train doesn't leave till tomorrow, and you can't sleep here. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, he's, like, sleeping. Right, they had all the sundown, the sundown yeah. towns, they called yeah. it. Did you know about that? No. You know how many towns in America where, like, anybody who's not white can't spend the night here? And you have to be out by yeah. sundown. Wow. Like, all over the country. I mean, like, the, the level of racist shit they did in the oh 30s my God. is fucking unbelievable. So it's amazing, like his road, like of him just like walking and hitch. It's, it's basically like the Hobbit, you know. He's like just to a gig, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. it's a pursuit like, of happiness, yeah. <laughs> just him and his son walking. And the then you gigs. come in with your amazing racist videos, like that <laughs> legacy is funny. Why are you in my shed? <laughs> Get out of here! What That's about I keep uh, my water bucket? What about the guy who uh, committed suicide? That guy is kind of of your generation. The who's uh, that? Chicken. Uh, no, uh, wa- what's his name, Christine? You know, uh, Thomas Walser- Wallace something. David Foster Wallace. That guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sauce? I had not read of his stuff. A.K.A. <laughs> 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 Sauce, the, <laughs> the <laughs> urban <laughs> act. <laughs> David Foster, that's his that's his, uh, yeah, that, that's that's sauce. That's like a uh, mind-changing book. Really? Life-changing yeah, book. Yeah, I would read that. He, uh, I, I heard about Anne Rand, and I used to shit on her. I'd be like, that. I'll never do it, but that, the more I hear Found about Head. it, the more I'm like, what? Fountainhead or the other one, the new one, uh, Cloud Atlas. Yeah, not the new one. I mean, Atlas Shrugged. Atlas Shrugged. Which is the one that the guy just like? Cloud Atlas is the Matrix movie. <laughs> the Matrix I'm not people. Well read. <laughs> Which one was what? Where he just this guy, just, main character, just did, what, did whatever he believed in, regardless of circum like what other people. That's like every boy. Oh, wait, back up. Who committed suicide? A comic? David Foster, Foster Wallace. Wallace. David Foster Wallace. An author. Comic? Oh, an, author. Yeah. an author, so it doesn't concern You're you. Just, yeah. Oh, about him. who Don't cares? Wow. You <laughs> write a bunch are... of dumb books I'll never read? <laughs> <laughs> you know who doesn't dumb, kill themselves dumb, enough? Yeah. Look at that guy with a kilt on a bike. Uh, girls who play the ukulele. There's not enough of those suicides. <laughs> Do you think people read less because of the internet? Do you think people read less now? A thousand percent. I don't even read full articles. I just read the headline of an article. I'll be like, yeah, yeah, I get it. <laughs> You're That's like a, terrible. You're a busy guy. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to do a second season of, of uh, Comedy Underground? There's been no talk of that. Not oh, I don't hope know, they but, uh, do. They need some went, better examples of comedy. Yeah, why don't you give constructive criticism on it? Because you guys have all done different shows, so go ahead. What, well, Comedy Underground? I show, yeah. He showed me mine. It There's nothing... Awesome. I mean, just if you just see the the amount of like shitty stand up shows That's true. Okay. before, it's, it's like yeah. I don't even know where to begin. Like criticism, it's like oh, there's I'm no. so glad I'm it's not some fucking I'm on the podcast. No, it's fuck. He's <laughs> gone. And let's has, talk. Let's rally. That has to come. It'll come back. Why would that not come back? No, because you know what? It really has to do with um, you know how committed they are to like. I, that I style. think that's a great. It's a great opportunity not only for the comics but also for the network to like. You know, they're all about looking for the next big thing. Yep. So this could help them. Yeah. And it also, you know, along the way will help all of us. That's the way I see yeah. it. It's like yeah. They, they might find the next some, um, you know. Oh, no. The more, even if I wasn't. Or something, but. Well, they're also obsessed right. with finding the next, like, 20-year-old thing. Right. right? That's, well, that's a big thing. How Ari's, Ari's, found him. Ari's got a, a fucking big fan base to be. That was his first ever Comedy Central appearance. Right. Yeah. You had done, uh, I remember you had done, did you do Norton's? Yeah, I did Norton's. Yeah, that was my last TV. Six down and years dirty. Ago. Yeah. That was also a great uh, mm-hmm. thing. And I don't yeah. know why that didn't go forward, but that was like the ultimate. That would have been the Friday's ultimate. Friday's got shut down because Ari pulled his dong out on TV. Oh. oh. <laughs> why did you do that again? It was a story about my dong. I felt to a best illustrated. Oh, he's no, like, no, yeah, no. he's like, you know what? I can't, I'm, not descri- you're like, I'm not really describing it right. Let me just show you. It was just, how you can get a blowjob anywhere. You don't have to be hard. And then I related it to being in front of an audience. And did you get hard? No, I thought about taking out like a quarter of Viagra or something. No, but he, you shouldn't have. He, he yeah. hung great dong, dude. You know, taking out a dong is one thing, but taking out a hard dong on TV, I, that's unprecedented. No, yeah, you is. didn't shave your balls because that's Stanhope's thing. No, I didn't shave my balls. <laughs> <laughs> shave my balls. You had to yeah, pull your dick. Bobby Lee already pulls his balls out a lot. He Bobby Lee time. basically ends up totally naked by the end of the show, quivering. The comedy story. He looks like Asian time. Ron Jeremy when it's all over. He takes <laughs> off his shirt. And I wanted him to do the comedy underground. He said he couldn't do it because he was working on an hour. I respect that. So he ain't working on uh, well, an hour. Well, that's what he told me. <laughs> Maybe actually. <laughs> to be one, to be one of the He's celebrity like yeah, add-ons? like I yeah, I don't think he got what I wanted from him. But uh, you know, Comedy Central originally wanted people to do sets, and I'm like, you know, 
some people are working on hours. Some people are just doing me a favor. So let's just take what we can get. Yeah. And a lot of that stuff I thought got in the way of a lot of the comedy. Yeah. But the rest of it was. Um, but the rest Maybe. of it, like, it would balance out better if it went forward. Like, I'd figure out a better way to do it. Like, I'd rather have one of them, like, as a surprise guest, introduce one of you guys. Like, have, like or someone like that. Just yeah, pop like, out. just pull them out of the audience and have them do it. And then at the we can do moments, like, backstage. It was the backstage stuff, and Christine's here, so she could tell you that, like, a lot of that did not roll right the first, because they didn't understand what we were doing backstage. But as we did the reshoot, that's when they kind of got it and how it was needed. And I think uh, on the other show, Comedy Meltdown, yeah. uh, Jonah's show, which is done, uh, it's the more old version. You'll be getting yeah. all. Uh, they, I think, have the Jonah backstage likes me really now. figured out of like, you know, they had like. I'm not sure because Gaffigan was like, there were too much in my face. I needed time to prepare my oh, material, really? and I didn't have any time. I used to being by myself for five minutes. Okay, yeah. I thought that those those guys would have it better because they've been doing that show for a long time. Yeah. You know, it's not like a creation. Is Meltdown sh- like shot already? Meltdown You've never shot. done that that shot room. Finished. I I've done room. that room. Yeah. I did the room. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty great. It's a great. Yeah, show. I could see you because yeah. you. That was like in L.A. That was like a place to go. Mm-hmm. But for these guys, when they go out there, I did very well there. I did. I did, well I, did, I, did I did really well there. At, at there's stink of New York on them with their any of those it's nerd shows. Any of those nerd shows. If you tell them that they, it's okay to laugh, if you yell at them, that they, they will. They'll come around. But they they just want to come out and be kind of like cunty first for some reason. I feel like always. You know what? A lot of it is too. They're all friends. They yeah. go to the shows together all the time. They're also not so as smart as somebody's everyone. Dad, they're like, oh, Margaret, she always brings her dad. Uh-oh. So what is it? It's, it's a corporate it's gig? Is yeah, that what you're telling a- me? No. <laughs> I feel like everyone gives Dude, them just much more credit. people in Los Angeles to choose who the hot comics are for, the, for America. They choose who gets to be a mural on the side of the Laugh Factory? That same group. 75 of those 200 on any given night. And, and you were never choosing. in that scene. You were never a UCB I always comic. wanted to be in it, but they never took me. Really? You wore all the outfits and shit. I know. It didn't work. Apollo, he got mad at me once. He goes, "Oh, why don't you go pray to Janine Garofalo?" <laughs> I'm like, dude, yeah, I'm but, but she's not out. like them. She's pretty nice. She's but, cool. but, 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 but I, yeah, dude, I would she's absolutely, I absolutely them. thought it's, it's amazing to me that but, you that you're not that you were not in that world at all. Store guy. Dave yeah. used to always ask me, like, how's Largo this I know, week? Yeah, I'm like, I don't know. No, Dave, Dave does that. <laughs> like one of those guys. He was never any of those guys. <laughs> Dave does that. He calls me and goes, you know, uh, you're alternative buddies. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I just didn't care about my glasses and how they looked. So I got thick glasses. No, but it. I do because I would see you there. like, Because uh, the comedy store is pretty much the most. Everybody says it's like the most New York of all the clubs. Yeah, That's being very generous because I feel like that is like. One of the hardest rooms in America, just for the comics who are there. Yeah. They never get on. They're all waiting, and there's no crowds there. So, it's like, it's a mean, crowd of yeah. comics oh, standing dude. in the back. It's, it's I, Ari, that means something. Ari, I saw Ari just uncork on some comic who was like hosting the show because he wasn't going to put somebody on. He was like, they fucking wait around all night, yeah. you piece of shit. Why the wasn't he going section. to? The employees go up on Mondays. They used to do Sunday Mondays. They just cut it to Mondays, and he's not getting them up. They work fucking three shifts a That's week true. to get up for three minutes. That's the system. Why wouldn't he get him up? Because he wants to go home. In. He's trying Who? to blame it on Okerson. He was like, "Well, Jay did eleven minutes instead of seven. I'm like, Jay went on way after you were supposed to be. By the way, guest eleven the minutes show. is the shortest LA guest spot. <laughs> LA is the home of the forty-five minute drop-in uh, minimum, with just like a couple of basic cable credits from the nineties. I can explain that. <laughs> <laughs> but I saw you one time at Tell come in. I didn't was, do 45 no, minutes. No, no, no. But no. they asked you to go on. You're like, no, I don't want to bump anybody. See? I was like, wow, really? Yeah. Gentlemen. I'd rather awkwardly uh, give them all cigarettes in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Field God. questions about Insomniac. Dude, I remember that was, that was <laughs> a... Borrow your cigarette holder. Louis J. Gomez employee brought the worst people into that like uh, ticket like street team sales game Where? and whenever you do a show that's run by a street team guy they'll, they'll have their own night like they'll, they'll sell tickets for some like the laugh lounge when that existed yeah. and then on Tuesday night there would be like the guy who runs the street team show and he'd be like will you come do my show and the whole street team's there and dude what was fucking great was uh, all of them I knew the guy who was in charge this kid Jacob but all every one of his crew at one point goes I was smoking cigarettes still and they go hey man can I get a cigarette from you I'm like so I gave one to the first guy and then another from the second guy I go Go share it with him, man. I gave that guy one already. And then two more came up, and then one of them's girlfriend came and asked me. And I, I said no to all of them, and I was like, but they were interrupting me every minute, with, uh, uh, without a doubt. Sure. So then that guy, Jacob, comes out, and he goes, hey, what's up, dude? And I go, dude, what's up? is like, you got to talk to your fucking crew, man. Like, comics aren't going to want to come do your show if your entire street team is asking me to bum a cigarette. Every one of them asked me to bum a cigarette. He goes, 
Oh, that's funny, dude. He goes, oh, well, never mind. Then I go, never mind what he goes. I was coming over to ask you if I could bum a <laughs> oh cigarette. My God. Street uh, team fucking. And I'm like, you guys are just a bunch of we fucking. I go, that is a shitty thing. I go, take your fucking money from selling tickets and go buy a communal pack of cigarettes for all you and your fuckhead friends. Yeah, I go, yeah, yeah. It's uncomfortable to sit here and say no to everybody. Yeah. I don't even want to know their names. Like heroin addicts and shit. Yeah, it's so fucking retarded. We never had street teams in L.A. No. Nope. Oh, God. The, the Where would they go? Either. What's the epicenter to go to? Uh, maybe Hollywood and Highland, where the Man's Chinese Theater is. Yo, it's a drive-in Monica, town, you know? Monica. It's not like a foot traffic town. Like well, the Melrose is. Improv, I thought they had some kind of thing going no, there. No, it's all bringer shows. Oh, okay. It's just the same thing. They just let they have the Comedy Juice show. That's the big show uh, out that way. Yeah. And, like, uh, that's where you see a lot of drop-bys. And I also sure. feel bad about, like, going on there. But I try and keep it tight, you know, unless Jeff Ross is around, then we start doing that thing. Dude, we never had any pro- problem yeah. with people doing 15 minutes. Yeah. Every night of the week. They can come out every night and it's okay. It's when they start going long or just... Oh, I was referring to in. urban acts. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you know this, that? but uh, reparations for slavery include never having to, to observe a light. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only reparations they got. That's not bad. No, no, it's worth it for you dude, to go was, that I, long. Dude, you I, might get late after the show. Dude, I was just saying, I think I started to say this earlier. I was like, there is no... I did that, that show in St. Thomas. It was an all-black show. There is no job that just looks more tiresome and painful oh, yeah. than than throwing a black comedy show, like wrangling black uh, five <laughs> black comedians. One. Yeah, producing wrangling one. five black comedians, dude. All of them have. Wait their, a minute, you're not talking about like the Lucas Brothers or something? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not. <laughs> oh, you meant actual black? <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm talking about actual black. Um, lo, lo, but dude, be, I'm saying, but little Bebop, are you coming to the show? Yeah, soon? yeah but I'm saying it's always that thing. It's always, they're always like, it's hello, like, Bumblebee. Like, Where are you? Hey, has anybody seen this guy? He's on. He's on. Like he's the third comic, and the show's getting ready to start. And you finally get a hold of him. He's like, "What's up, man?" He goes. Hey man, like the van left without you. We we had to go. Like, where are you? You're on third. I'm an adult. I know. And he's like, and he's, he's getting his dick sucked like 20 minutes away at some girl's <laughs> house who says she's gonna take. You know what I mean? It's like he's already fucking late for his spot, and it's like he's just leaving. He's like, what's the big deal? They're always like, what's the big deal about? They don't I told care. You, I figured it out. It's Dude, this show I did. Yeah. Everybody, the art. This, this, this is the, comp, the, the the lineup. It was gonna be. It was gonna be uh, me. It was me, Mike Yard. Or Mike Yard hosting. Yeah. This guy, Imagine, went first. He's a black circuit comic. <laughs> Puerto Rican. His name's Imagine. Of course it is. Um, his last name is giving a shit. This is great. And then fucking, uh, whatchamacallit. And then uh, Intermission after me. That's the name of the guy? <laughs> <laughs> intermission, ladies. Uh, <laughs> after and then, me, and then they come back. For a while. Then they come back. Uh, Mike Yard will go back up. And then Tony Woods, Donnell Rawlings. Um. That's a good show. That is a good I show. Love Tony and Donnell. Shh, let yeah. me tell you, but I'm just telling you, it's, it's such a when it's a black. It, it, we're in this giant ballroom. It looks like a fucking Tyler Perry funeral. Everything's white, <laughs> gown dressed. The sound system is fucking pretty awful. But it's like a thousand people. And you go, and Mike Yard goes up there. He does he does pretty good. He's always kind of on time. Mike is like a really he's, on time. Oh yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, no, no, he is. <laughs> no, yeah, he's like, well, yeah, but I'm saying, but, Mike, but Mike's hosting thing. For that. He brings out Imagine. Yeah, Imagine he, goes up there. Imagines like his closing bit is like he has. I don't understand a word he's saying. He just keeps doing something about a Jamaican concert, and then it says DJ hit it, and then Jamaican music plays. And he like humps his dick at the audience. Works for me. Right, yeah, yeah no, uh, it's a killer like a bit. Great night of entertainment. What's well, the problem, well, dude? Look, no one's, no one's debating. Can I get my killer mom bit in, in there? <laughs> <laughs> but they, uh, <laughs> it's, 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 bit was killer. But then uh, they go to, they bring me up. I did like okay at best. Intermission, they go up. Tony Woods is like <laughs> fucking hammered. He does, <laughs> he does. Uh, everyone's supposed to do ten to twelve. He does forty five. <laughs> oh wow, forty five. How can you do that? Uh, and then Donnell goes up there and does God knows how. The show was over three hours long. Wow. And was the crowd there? The, like the whole way through? They stayed, but just, yeah. now they're there. But it's just like, and then like in the morning, it's like literally 6.30, we're all going to the airport. We have to be there by 7 <laughs> o'clock for our flight. 6.30, I'm staying there by myself. I knew it was going to happen. <laughs> Donnell Rawlings, 6.45, they finally get a hold of Donnell Rawlings, who says, I changed my flight. Didn't tell anybody. Doesn't care. Yeah. Doesn't care. Everyone's waiting for him. And then Tony Woods, uh, they call him. You can tell he just woke up. He goes, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll come up. And then as we're driving to the airport running late, he goes, yeah, he goes, yeah, I changed my flight last night, but I'm going to go there and, you know, <laughs> see if they'll let me on anyway. I mean, that's like the, how oh, they – and I'm so like, what's my flight number? Dude, yeah, yeah. is someone definitely picking me up, take me to the airport, or should I set up a cab now, like, you know, but the night before? Because I'm like, white. 
And like, <laughs> it just looks like Jay, it, it sounds like you're uptight and you have a problem with <laughs> yeah. some brothers. I mean, I, I the racism I'm getting from you right now is first of all, it's time is I hope people listening man. understand I'm not a part of it. Uh, well, Ari had, great, my theory. Ari had a great to theory late. today. They're bred to be late. Well, slavery. I'm late. There's I'm no late. time in slavery. Four o'clock. Who cares? I'm also more, more physical labor for no reward. Listen, it's I'm also late animal. for everything, yeah. so I don't want to. <laughs> I wouldn't make it a matter. Of, Ari just upped the racist ante like twenty degrees. They're bread. To yeah, but I like hey, Jimmy the Greek of Showtime. I like how like they're late, but you throw in there like he's getting his dick. It's like he probably was playing like some game on his phone. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, too much some weird like chat, like Skype chat Angry with some Bird's chick light. in St. Louis. It's uh, a yeah. show me your tit. It just looked one. Dude, when I did when I did BT's comic view the le- the second Last time year? The, the second, second time, time they yeah. asked you back. I did it three times. Yeah, you really are like you have that urban like you can, you know, play both sides of the fence. I like that. Not anymore really. I, got, I can I well, guess. Let's say we had like a comedy Olympics. Could I use you as like, you know, head <laughs> up against like, you know, yes. oh shit, we're in Cleveland. Yes. Jay is the white version of a Jamaican bobsled team. Put on your Farrell hat and get out there and do your thing. I'm talking the comedy Olympics, not the cock block Olympics that goes on at the cellar. <laughs> <laughs> the, com- the comedy Olympics. It is hilarious to watch guys out there try to get laid. But dude, when I, when I did BT's comedy for the second time, this girl, when I went outside to smoke a cigarette, yeah. there was a white girl who was like a production assistant or whatever, and it was, I was the only white comic that day on the shows. And I go, I'm going to go smoke a cigarette. She goes, oh, okay, well, then wait a second. She goes, everybody... Go out now while Jay smokes a cigarette, and then when he comes back in, I gotta. Everyone's gotta come back in when he comes back, and I'd be like, "Why would you put that?" And then she goes, "By the way, she goes, I'm gonna give you everybody's meal tickets, and then when it comes, to, <laughs> you're in charge now." I, I, I go, "I go, you're, you're making this. Weird. Yeah, I go, you're making me very uncomfortable, yeah. lady. <laughs> like these are all grown men." But she goes, "But I'm telling you, last yesterday, I give no one has their ticket when it comes time to eat, and then five guys are they walked off with some girls, and they oh, and they wow. came back like three hours, and it's like it just sounds like a fucking nightmare." Because none of them are the, the comedy or is so sec- the comedy is so secondary. That's why, dude. You got to watch this. Kid. I'm not gonna say a name, but you got to watch this kid in Arsenio Hall or wing it. It's one of the. Fucking, I saw it. It's Sounds insane. like a great reality show. I'm putting my Jews' eyes on. This. <laughs> <laughs> you you my saw what I'm talking about? Yeah. Are you blown away? Like who? What, what producer was like? Go ahead, go wing it. Go give it a shot. Well, it's called confidence, Jay, and swag. <laughs> but he eats because he's got swag. You got to hate on. But him. he eats shit. <laughs> he know. actually eats. I know. Shit. I'm joking. What on Arsenio? Yeah, I want to do that show. That's that would be definitely. He that. tries to wing really? it. Did you do the old one? No, I didn't. Oh. I, I watched it a bunch. Me but too. I, you, I thought you were new kids in the block. <laughs> I was. Not, uh, remember when Dice did crowd work on that show? No, I don't remember that. No, no did he really? Not the, wasn't the crying episode. No, that's, that's, what crowd work. that's the pinpoint end of Dice's career yeah. as, a, as a mega superstar. No, this was great. He did, he did 60 seconds, a couple jokes, and he was like, yeah, come. And they just went out to the crowd. Was it good? Had to move. Yeah, he just fucked around with some guy in the front. Look at you, just sweater. <laughs> <laughs> you can't combine words. Um, <laughs> he, uh, I got to watch that. When he cried on City Hall, it was the end of Dice's like It was. It was the end of, uh, I think, the 80s. It was like it was over the nineties. It's it was the day Kurt lost his innocence. That's for sure. Yeah. I remember him and Don Rare fighting, and Attell was there. Going, I had to do a lot of growing up. Stage. That day. Like, Fuck you! You go on stage. I'm watching this fight. <laughs> Why were they fighting? Yeah, that was a good. That was a good one. That's a good story. Why were they fighting? Who's it? I don't know. Because Dice Dom was Herrera on, and Dom had to go. Uh, he Dom had to Flight or something. Yeah. He had to go do another gig, and he was like, "How long is this?" And like. Uh, and uh, Dice comes whip, whipping off the stage. You were there, right? Yeah, yeah. And he and he starts really getting in Dom's face. And I'm like, someone has to be on stage right now. Yeah, Otherwise, there's no host, crowd, so like, it's just looking. There's no one on stage. They hear people yelling. A ruckus outside. Outside. So I went up. Although, if I was in a comedy club and I watched Dom Herrera fight Andrew Dice Clay, I would, yeah. I would run outside for that. No, dude, the best. That was the only time. Dude, I've never the best. Been like, I can take the stage right now, and I'm just like, no interest. I'd rather watch the best. Ar- the best argument I've See, ever in New seen. New York, that never would have happened. They would have. They would have been a guy on stage, like right yeah. away. To the best, the best comedy and fight I've ever like been been privy to uh-huh. was. Uh, <laughs> shoot each other. Yeah, <laughs> it was so great because it's such a, a, a the fun. They would just both so laugh at this so much because it was like it was over yeah. a decade ago. Norton was still opening for Dice, Jim yeah. Norton, and he brought a girl into the cellar. Do you remember this at all? Yeah, Kurt, he, brought girl, he brought a girl. He brought a girl. He brought a girl into the cellar. It was like you know like a. Like a big and Patrice titted, wouldn't like, leave him alone. And Patrice just kept doing dice. He goes, he goes, no. And he goes, don't be out too late. I'm taking you to the mall in the morning. <laughs> oh, he goes, we're gonna get you some new performing outfits. It was when Spider uh, Spider Man came out, and he kept calling him Doctor Octopus. <laughs> 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 Doctor Octopus. 
And he just comes over to her and just gets in between right close to me. She goes, shut the fuck up. I have a girl here. Like, he's so seriously angry. And then the, just made Patrice laugh harder and bang tables more. By the way, just a reminder, uh, Comedy Underground, Saturday oh, nights at, a plug. at 1 a.m. <laughs> Make sure to set your DVRs. What, what, uh, what week is this? Uh, this will what? be out on Monday, so it'll be two and a half weeks left. Okay, so Monday you can go to Comedy Central Direct since they only play one time a week. And, uh, this oh, really? They don't even play a second time? Mm-hmm. And uh, we're, we're down to the last two episodes by next Monday. And, uh, you know, thank you guys all for doing it. If you go to my site, davidtell.com, you can see clips behind the scenes. <laughs> you know what they should have uh, done definitely for behind the scenes? They should have just left microphones on the tables and then just... Exactly. You like it raw. You don't like any kind of... You don't like a, a well, weird young guy coming up around. and asking you to start your conversation over? Yeah, start hey, over. Hey, fellas, could you just... Uh, do oh. it? I missed it. Hey, hey. <laughs> I had to pretend I... I, I was like really genuinely excited to see DeRose. I haven't seen him in a few months. And then yeah. 20 seconds later, I was told to pretend to be excited to see him again. <laughs> yeah, and I was I like, this sucks. That had a lot to do with uh, bad camera. Like, we didn't have the right cameras, and we couldn't move. Stuff. Oh, oh, it all worked out. I mean, you know, if you're going to make me the head of this coal mine disaster, I'm just going <laughs> to... <laughs> I followed all regulations. <laughs> no, no, I, I felt bad, and I think Christine will back me up. Is that like... They didn't get it. We got it. And then we were in the situation where, like, who had the power? Yeah. And I could only sulk around so much. Sure, sure. Yeah. I was downstairs you tanking. Too. You know, so but the be, final product was your vision pretty much, right? Well, the vision was basically to take what the special was and bring it into a real club. And the cool, of the, the cool thing since the guy you were making fun of, Scott, who was the director, is that, like we both were saying, and Jeremy, the editor, is that, like, Everybody looks good on the little cameras. Everybody God, looks I good. Do. Well, that's the best shot. part. I that little cameras are great. Yeah, yeah. All on even you. that wasn't done correctly because half the cameras didn't work. Half the cameras oh, were shit. out of focus. There was lighting problems. Like I've said this on like a hundred hours of podcast now. Is that like there were serious camera problems all the way through? We didn't really? have close ups on you guys. They had moving camera work yeah. for no reason. There was a smoke machine. In the room, we didn't need that, you wow. know. Like but they were able to efficiently get it all in one more day, though. That was pretty great. Well, yeah, but a lot of that had to do with just me, like you know, directing I mean, it's sort commitment. Because, like, uh, you know, I it was wasn't gone, about though. me; it was about you guys. And yeah, it's like, yeah. If it looked half-ass, I would be responsible. And I, I really did take it seriously that I was like, if we're going to do this show, we we really should throw everything we got at it, and like, uh, you know, see what the network thinks. For the record, I love Scott. I think it's funny that Scott hey, Scott can have an IMDb credit as on camera. He's like, <laughs> he's, yeah, he's your on stage guy on your thing uh, Scott's, Dude, uh, you did something great when I when you were like this I think I gotta go on. are they warmed up I'm like uh, maybe and Where you're like they Scott? don't seem warm up I'll do 10 more minutes and I was like please do that would yeah because yeah, you know what I didn't really know like the first guy definitely uh, took the heat on that show because <laughs> hey, even with I'm gonna the, go do my spot oh go do your spot yeah cool dude should Keep we going. do like a play by play Kurt I'm gonna go do a spot it's okay I'm gonna pause this for up here so what mean, no I was just gonna say that like um, it definitely was like I think the crowd was a little too much TV crowd and not club crowd. Yeah. And now a lot of that had to do with, like, stopping the waitress service and, like, you know, I don't know. Because they stopped it. Yeah, they did. Because we, we didn't want to get in the way. But, you know, if it did go further, we would, we would I think I we would just feel, go for the crowd that would come. Yeah, I you know? feel like sometimes they're over, they put over emphasis they on. They really tell them a lot of stuff, like, don't do this, don't do that. And it really takes the fun out of it. At Han I was at Hannibal's taping in uh, Chicago, and the lady was talking in the back. She goes, I told those motherfuckers up front that if they were going to sit up front, they couldn't leave the whole really? time. But I'm like... So what happens? Who cares if you have somebody leaving? It'll look like someone's going to the bathroom. You acknowledge I, it. Like I what's what's the difference? Don't acknowledge it. Do yeah, acknowledge it. Doesn't matter. It. What? I didn't I didn't watch his whole special, but I saw clips and it looks great. It really does. Like, oh yeah, that's a good theater special. That's like what a good one should look. No, like. it was cool. It was a double double like layer. It wasn't too massive. Mm -hmm. um, and it was his hometown too. Now like Kurt. Kurt's sorry, special like, looks Kurt's good. special looks really good. Yeah. And it does. Jay, you're you're like on on deck to do one too. So now it's like. You know, Jay, they venue you and style and all that kind of stuff. But the special should be more exciting than we... Than, like, for a while there, it was like, I got to get the material together, then the venue, and then let them handle everything else. Why do we Why do we not be involved in that? We oh. have every right to be involved with it. And, like, the problem with these specials is, like, they figured out a cheap way to do it, and it took a lot of the fun out of it. And it, we're the losers on that. The audience that... The comedy audience is the loser. Yeah. Because, like, you're taking a guy who worked on an act for an, a year, two years, three years, then you put it up there. It looks pretty much like every other special. People watch it. They quote three jokes. They move on. Then it's done. This is like a big thing. A movie's an hour and a half. This guy just did original. This woman or man <laughs> just did original something for an hour. That's impressive. And it should be treated that way. 
The it's end. just no, but you're right. It does. Like they, they, they do. Right. Move, they do move on. I'm talking about anybody's. I'm talking about like anybody from stuff. Jeff Dunham to fucking Chris Rock. It all should be. Not everything fits into the same category. Like exactly. I used to say, like you, you are my example. I'm like D- David Tell is not doing comedy generally the same rooms that Dane Cook does. Exactly. So yeah. why are we filming them in the same spot? The, the there, you know, like the one thing that like the network knows about these comics is that like you know when they see them live, that live show. Yeah. Is yeah. what they're going to book them on. Yeah, so you recreate know, that. A tape or whatever, or something like that. That might be the, the whatever, but they want to capture the liveness. But then they kind of go in the different direction with, with the production to like take some of that away just because it's easier or just like... like You see a lot of specials that, have been, that were like, why did they light it like that? Yeah. It's so overlit. It's like, I'm not having a good time. And I'm in my house. I'm not wearing my pants and I'm watching. That one with the cartoon do, do, behind you or the atomic boom behind you? Which one was that? That one. Comedy uh, Central. Uh, half, half hour. Half hour? Right? Yeah, like... I would say that, like, you know, whatever, besides the uh, skanks for the memory thing, yeah. that, like, the majority of the stuff that I did were really, like, you know, me being a good soldier, going, like, okay, I have the material, and then them doing everything else. After, after a while, you realize that, like, you know what? It doesn't matter. This is all just, like, momentary anyhow, so I might as well make it exactly how I want it. And Doug yeah. Stanhope is the guy that I look to, because when I saw him shoot that one at Gotham, I was like, what the fuck is this about? Because it was yeah. overlit, it didn't look good. They had a mirror on the ceiling for some reason. Yeah, and that I was, was like, really tough. Is, yeah, really like, weird. You know what? It's different. It's yeah. different, and the material like, me, you know, it made the material stand out a bit. But it, it wasn't like, but no, well, but, he's big but, on but not doing a theater kind of. Yeah, he's yeah but visual, but visually, it wasn't like. Yeah, no, you, you're like, dude, Nick Cannon's first special. Uh, Cannon's forget first it, forget, special. forget. And by the way, see it if you haven't. Please. <laughs> the, the the great, the, by the way, the, it's it's the entire bonding experience of me and Dan Soder's whole friendship. If you want to see a guy <laughs> take his shirt on and off, no, yeah. it never comes back on, buddy. It's, oh, a, it's a slow, <laughs> it's a slow peel down out of a tuxedo. It's it is fantastic, and and, and the second special, he added gloves to the mix. Driving leather driving gloves. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, but there's you know. a difference between. That's your but wait, 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 I was okay. going to say about the Nick Cannon thing was no that he. Uh, the backdrop on his first thing, and this is like produced by like uh, New Wave, Barry Cat, Volkweiss, these guys who have done been involved in a lot of specials. His backdrop is a grid of like a thousand small light bulbs. So when they have it up on him, and he's he's very mobile. He moves yeah. when he moves, and if you, if your eyes just focus weird, and it start, it's it'll give you a fucking seizure. Uh, I mean, right. like it's it's so difficult. Like, why would you have anything that distracted? When he moves, focus. The lights I like are like to watch comedy yeah, and crump while yeah, I watch. The, it. <laughs> no, but the lights are like trailing as you, yeah. you have to like look away. It's like almost like nauseating. We had it's, a it, crystal. We had a, one of those disco balls once at a show in like middle California. We're like, can you turn that off? Like, no, it looks awesome. I'm like, no, man, yeah, yeah. it's not great. There was for some comedy. definite lighting problems on the Comedy Underground show, and you know, you know, when you talk about specials, there's like. There's always that moment of like, you know, you're a huge comic. You're a touring, like, you know, celebrity comic. You know, you've done like three movies or whatever. It's like, <laughs> this is an event. And like, oh, yeah. you know, they pump up the crowd so much. And then the guy comes out and he does his poor material. And you're like, I'm not saying the material is like, it's like the material is good for this guy. It's just the crowd has been pumped to the point where you're like, oh, this is bad. Yeah. I like, heard, I heard it doesn't Stanhope match. said that at, the, at the, one of his tapings. Oh, like, really? They all went crazy. He's like, here he comes. Doug, stand over there. went nuts. And he's like, thank you, thank you. Hey, what's my name? And yeah. he just put it out to the crowd, and they all looked at him. He said he thinks he might have queried them a little too much on that, like right well, off the bat. It doesn't matter because I, I, there's the event like where you're going to do like stunts, and you have fire and all that kind of stuff. And then you have to do your act. It's like, why would you make that? Why would you, why would you actively make something hard to follow on your own special? Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it was like a, you know, it's like, have a guy juggle lions. Yeah, and then, and then I'll like, come out. Know, my yeah. girlfriend told me to go to bed, bath to be. You know, it's like it's weird. Like the material never matches. Why the, does the, McDonald's I saw Dice super size. I saw Dice's last run at the Garden. Yeah, was, yeah, but when, that's, when, when he was with Norm. Event. No, no, but it, it was a event. really event. But it is so funny though. It's a, I, I like this how subtle he comes out. Cause it's like. It's a song he made. It opens to with a whole video retrospective of his career. Oh, that thing! And yeah. then he comes out and still have like take like, five minutes of like. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> like just chilling. You're like, what is he doing? Well, like when Dane did, uh, you know, his big thing too. You're like, this is an event, and the crowd was pumped for it. And I was like, this is all good. And then yeah. because it was a long, it was you know, it was uh, you know, you have to do a certain amount of time. It, it goes back to material, right? So it's like. It's like you know, I felt bad because I was like, you know, you want to keep that energy. Like, but you it don't can't. Want to, it can't possibly stay up that you know, that much. Like, if you went to go see the Stones play, you don't want to see at some point like them just going like, okay, we're just going to all check our phones. Yeah, you know, like come yeah. on, we're, we're old men. Well, that's what I did. Yeah. Kids. Why did comedy in front of those like bands with those like those big amphitheater crowds? It is funny to kind of like 
it's so not comedically rewarding because you really do have to go. It's like, so you guys out here ever have a threesome? You have to like, really like yell the shit at them. And like, so much is lost in comedy in that. So much in that massive places. Do any of you guys do the oddball tour? No, I'm uh, trying no, to. I'm thinking of doing it. But, Next uh, year? Yeah. I wonder what it's like in front of 20,000 people. Is that really is that really the number? Renazisi showed me yeah. a, a picture of it. He's a, it's just I did him with those bands, dude. Yeah. But I oh, did it with, with those, those bands. Yeah. But I'm saying that's actually it's, it's it's You view it as combat comedy though. I see it that way too. Outdoor comedy doesn't work for me. It it, it is sort of combat comedy, but I, you could you could destroy it too. when you kill it, it's great though, man. I only have like one or two of them go bad. Yeah, but what is killing it? You really don't know in an outdoor thing. I've yeah. done No, you don't you don't ones. you don't know, but I'm telling you, you still if you hear five thousand people the wave of laughter is yeah. humongous. Here's yeah. my thing, though. It's like... You got to okay, feed off that. You, you, you can't look at faces. You have yeah. to feel the laughter. You have to get to a punchline and feel. Because if you look down, you're just going to see a lot of people not paying attention. But comedy's by the numbers. It's presented differently in those giant places. So it's like you, to film some half-hour guy doing a, you know, in front of 1,300 people his first time. It's like he's going to have to slow down, not be his normal self. You got to... Yeah, you're right. There's a lot of different It's like they're d- delivering it differently. Yeah. And I don't think I'm a twenty thousand guy funny kind of guy, but uh, you know I, I maybe. Won't do it but don't you even feel see, right? Your energy is different from Captain Miserable to uh, Road Work. Like My so, energy. your energy on stage. I'm saying oh, because yeah. of what it is, because of the way you're performing to like someone who's ten feet in front of you, or oh, not even, versus yeah. someone who's like you know a hundred feet in front. But when of you me. watch really good um, theater comics like Lewis Black or. Um, you know, Ron White, even like Louis. Louis C.K., those, yeah, sure. Yeah, like they bring the crowd in. Like Chappelle is like a master of bringing yeah, the crowd yeah. right in where no matter where you're sitting, you feel like he's talking right to you. That's a that's a skill. That really is. Dice, like a, that makes it an art. Dice said he would just talk to his four friends that he imagined in the back. Yeah, but he also is a bigger than life character. So like, I feel like he holds the stage just fine. Like when Dean moves, he holds the stage. I, I always say he's a great performer. Yeah, man. oh, he he's really, a great performer. He really he uses the stage. the stage. When you're on a theater, like when we've done these theater shows, don't you feel this urge to keep moving around? You're like, yes. look at all this theater. So much but space. I, but, but yeah. I fight, but I like fight there. there. I, I, that's why I sit. Yeah, also, that's well, no, that's good that you do that because that's how you do it. Focus them in on you. Yeah, and then they, they come to you. I was I, always surprised that Patrice made such a concerted effort to not sit on Elephant in the Room. Really? Yeah, he made a decision. He goes, I'm just not. He sat every set he did for sev- so many. No, he, for the last like couple weeks leading up to it, he started delivering the hour standing up and then just decided to do it that way. Huh. I was always surprised by that. I also thought he also really captured... Like, when I, when I would see him, um, you know, in a club or something like that, he really did, like, have a great stage presence because he's a big guy. You know, he's a big guy. And I never was, like, you know, like, sometimes with a big guy, especially the way he talks, you're like, is this intimidating? And it's like, not really. It's not really intimidating. No, he's not. He wasn't like that. No. He was definitely not a crowd work guy, but he would work the crowd. But he wasn't all like you and you. He wasn't that kind of guy. No, no, not really. Not really. He, he would wait for the people to res- – he would wait yeah. to see who responded to his – in, you know, inflammatory we'll statements. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, right, so he right. say something goes, goes, you know, he'd be like, <laughs> like bitches hate fun. <laughs> and he's like, yeah. you wait for some girl to be like, that's not true. Then and he only is true. Yeah, yeah then he goes, because then he, he likes the bait. Right. He'll just, he just pick a point and just person. go at it. Yeah. The only thing I didn't like at, at the uh, tail taping was this lady make, kept trying to make me sit. I knew you were doing 10 minutes. She goes, all right, you're next. So sit right next to the stage. Yeah, they didn't and get I'm it. Like, no. Are you crazy? They didn't didn't get the fact that like you know, eventually you have to like let the show be what it is. A show, which is like which is like if that even if you were in the wrong place, there could have been a great moment there. Yeah, yeah. Because like I, the one thing that I'm I would say that I'm pretty good at is like taking taking um, taking what's happening right now and trying to turn it into something. Wait a saunter. Yeah, and like I really I really do like that. Mm-hmm. Try and Jay is the same way. We're like trying to make this moment something. And if they, they were trying to make it like, you know, evening at the improv or something like that, that really bothered me yeah. when I saw that. Her hand was in my back as I was going to the stage. She was pushing now, me in the back. Ten, nine, like, eight. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like a rodeo. It's not like they're pushing you out on a bull. Uh, you ready? Like telling, like, He's ready. Yeah. Like, the first thing any of us learned how to do was walk to the stage. We're, we've got that covered. But they just get, you know what it is, man? There's so much like... It's such a world that if you don't even give a shit to care about, like, you won't. But it's so, like, there's so much 
union shit oh, and everyone's yeah. got to be done at a certain time. I mean, you know, they're so far beyond giving oh, yeah, a shit about how good the show is. Always like, Gaffer has to be done at fucking eleven fifteen, or we're fucked. Right. And then there's everyone, and then there's fifteen people making time and a half, and that makes people angry. And you won't get to use them another day. It's just like the weird shit like that. The good thing about like that show, especially, was like uh, you know, like I'll ask the crew, and like I'll see, like I'm listening to everybody, so I'll be like, you know, if I can see them laughing and having a good time with it, then I know that like we're on to something because they see a lot of stuff. Oh right. And like to get them to actually come out of the job and actually like kind of enjoy it. That's when you know that it's on something. And I also knew that it was, it was, uh, <clears throat> besides being uncensored, it was really good comedy. Like, I mean, like, I know the acts. And, yeah. you know, Christine also, like, will back me up on this, is that, uh, you know, at some point, like, you know, we had trouble, like, scheduling some, like, we needed closers, and we all also wanted all these, but I was never really worried, because we were, like, a block away from the cellar, so I could have, like made a phone call and like three guys could have come over and done seven hard minutes because yeah, it, right. it, it's not like we were out like in Burbank and it's like oh On who are we going to get you know it was it was different they could just get off the train and go over there yeah like you know whatever whatever it would be it's like I, I just knew that we had plenty of, of choices yeah there's a talent pool where it's like you could have done another season <laughs> like, right there from, yeah, from exactly. like 15 minutes away you yeah. pretty much did I mean, if you just take the Jeff Ross stuff that's a whole other well, yeah, well, that, just those things the good thing about that was that like you know it's good when it's good when we have that thing at the end, and J- Jay and I were talking about it. Is like because that's something they really don't do on other shows, uh-uh. which is like really have let fun. the guys have a victory lap. But it's more about the it's more about them mixing it up. And some people are better at it. Some people were uncomfortable. Sure. But at the end of the day, it's like the fans like it. They like when the comics talk to each other. You know, so, like seeing, we're doing now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But seeing you, it's come why the, the podcast has gone so popular. And it was you and Jeff on stage together. I guess you did it all the time. It was the first time yeah, I saw it. Yeah, we do it a lot. Yeah. But I was like, man, if you're a comedy fan, this is a humongous moment to just have be roasting members of the audience. And like, we want to, you know, like we always go to Titan because uh, that's the thing of editing is like really good editing will save any show. You know, yeah. it'll save it. It won't make it better. It won't make it great, but it will make it better. That's what I'm trying to say. But like, you know, the editors who did it really knew comedy, and they had to listen to everybody's elongated sets and like Des, you know, the, who did the it? network. That was Des. Jeremy, yeah, Jeremy, and like yeah, there was so many other good guys. He did Steve, great, man. And uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of them. But the but the but the point of it was that the network they also wanted everybody's sets to be like you know they wanted they didn't want to get the rep of like we cut guys bits and we used the right. setup here and then we went to a punchline there. and like I said. You know what? I know what a strong set is, and I know what one isn't. And like, you know, I thought like what we talked about is like I know how comics are. It's like you don't want to burn material unless you have to. So like, you guys came up there and like you rolled through it, and then you rolled through some other stuff. And like at the end of the day, like I just had to make sure that like it was a strong set, and that like everybody wasn't talking about the same thing. Yeah, you sure. Know? So, <laughs> you know, I've done. Uh, yeah. I, I guess like the uh, it's the benefit also of, like knowing you personally because like. I did premium blend, and I did a, a thing on HBO, the P Diddy thing, and the thing on Showtime, and I, I've never gotten a call after I taped it, uh, yeah, even about the show coming when, out. When I just had to wait commercial, let alone get a call from you being like, "How do you feel if we use this whole thing?" Oh, like yeah. you were, you were very open. Like you really let the comics have some word in, like, oh, absolutely, they should because they, they know more what's always... important to them. Yeah, if there's a key line that might not be the funniest, but he goes, "No, no, I want this line in because it's, it really says everything I want to say." Yeah, they should get some say. What the fuck is that? That's a really bad problem. Oh, wow. What happened, dude? It's pouring water from the ceiling. Pouring water. Wow. Oh, that's a real fucking... Where's it coming from? Somebody's tub up up top? Somebody's dead in a tub up top. I've seen this (laughs) on Law and Order. Paul's right there. (laughs) (laughs) I love those beginning of Law and Order. Well, Charlie, maybe... What's happening? (laughs) Newspaper. <laughs> That's bad, huh? The in-laws always want me to Whoa, call the cops. I'm around if any of the waitresses need a hug. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I like for your show, too? Me? Did it need go on? I'm at the end. Uh, at the end. Who's on now? Uh, for a couple minutes, sure, yeah. Okay, oh, thanks. Uh, but, dude, what do, you want, what do you want to do? No, we can finish it. It's okay, cool. cool. Uh, but, again, don't forget to watch Comedy Underground. Saturdays at 1 a.m. Saturday night, thank 1 a.m. I know um, that went against your to plug like that, but thank you. And thank you guys for doing it. And for those uh, listening, thanks for watching. I think it's cool that it, it happens. Even if I wasn't on there, it's better for my yeah. style of comedy that that shit's oh, presented to people. And can I do a shout-out? Because in two weeks, it will be close to Memorial Day. Yeah. Operation Purple. Uh, uh, this one's for the troops sending their kids to a summer camp, special camp for them. 
It's a great cause. For those of you who've already donated, thank you. I'm giving my own money. This has nothing to do with, uh, you know... Uh, What's uh, Operation Purple? Yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, Operation Purple. It's cool, is a man. camp for yeah. uh, the veterans' troops who have been deployed multiple times. The kids go through special problems, so it's a really oh, great camp wow. for them. All these great programs. And it's with the, uh, you know... Um, you know, for those of you who uh, know what I'm talking about, this is like time to remember. How do people know, give money? Their service. They can go to my site again, davidtell.com, or just uh, go uh, hashtag Operation Purple, and you'll see all my stuff. Is that a? Uh, is, is that like? It's going to be effective this summer, right? For kids, like you're yeah. going to be able to go oh, yeah. this summer. I'm already giving money, and I'm going to give more at the end of this uh, run of the uh, eight shows. Is it Where? your? It's not. Is it your charity, or is it your charity, charity choice? I'm just, I'm just, just, just like, I yeah. did the benefit in person. There was a low turnout. It really bothered me. So right, right, that's right. right. Yeah. Huh. So I said I'm going to. I was talking that's... about myself, but I was like, if I get to like get the word out on this, operation and you've done Purple, something. That's a really awesome cause. So, right. are you guys going to be anywhere in the next m- month? I'll be in Raleigh next weekend, and then Buffalo Helium. Buffalo Helium. Okay, tabletop.com for tickets. Where are you be? Uh, <laughs> June, I'll be at the uh, is it Atlanta Improv. In June at the Atlanta Improv. The yes, Improv indeed. in Atlanta. I yeah, believe maybe it's the punchline. Punch maybe it's the punchline. Punch <laughs> or is it spell bar? Is it the other thing? Probably the punchline. Oh, yeah. Just to get you that, it's a punchline. Yeah, Thanks, punchline? Yeah. I really appreciate punchline. you having me on. In the You're welcome. Really I'm appreciate. glad you could do it. Um, and that's it, you guys. I'll be in China to see my <laughs> tour dates. And I'll, yeah, Please, and Chicago in, in August for one, one night. Well, there's the episode that I did not get. What did you guys think? Still fun, right? Um, anyway. Yeah, you saw how I tried. And then it just clearly evident it wasn't going to happen, so I just pulled off. I really, I, sh- I should have B game plans, like a B plan. So if the A plan doesn't work, the B plan plan can still work. I went canoeing. It was so goddamn fun. What a beautiful day. Found an apartment in New York, you guys, too. Found an apartment in the East Village, a block away, a block and a half from Jay. Oh, it'd be perfect. 18-minute walk to the Comedy Cellar, 19-minute walk to the stand. I mean, I can't ask for any better than that. Location-wise, that's goddamn perfect. In Manhattan. Fuck. I'm happy. I just got the call. I got to go sign the paperwork on Tuesday. Um, all right, that's the episode. You guys, do not forget to check out or give Dave's you know, charity a chance if you're a charity giver. Um, and don't forget to watch his show on Comedy Central. And also, don't forget to, go, to get Believe in Yourself. The new CD by Sam Tripoli. The new album, I guess, because the format, who knows what it's on. The new album by Sam Tripoli. Believe in yourself. You guys, pick it up. It's the best way to support comedians who are going to need it. I guarantee you, Jim Gaffigan, Bill Burr, Louis the K, they want you to hear their shit, but the 5 or $10 ain't making a huge difference to them. Sam Tripoli will eat on a day with those 10 bucks or however much his CD is. He will honestly get a meal out of it. So pick up, believe in yourself. He's on All Things Comedy. He's my brother on that. He's my friend from Punch Drunk Sports, and he's known him for 14 years, and he's one of the comics I look up to. You guys will absolutely love it. I've heard the CD, and it's great. Um, I got an, the actual CD itself. All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Ari Shafir, Skeptic Think, episode 167. A complete failure on my part. Shows that I'm a loser with this stuff, and that I cannot figure it out. I'm learning, I guess. I don't know. I'm not a podcaster. I'm a comic. (laughs) I mean, I don't know. I'm just guessing the podcast shit. All right. Ari Shafir, Skeptic Think, episode 167, Swing and a Miss, with David Tell, Kurt Metzger, and Jay Okerson. Over and out. All about shooting comedy or something. But because I'm fucking overwhelmed with fucking reverence for this guy, I couldn't do it. So it's a failure on my part as a interviewer still a funny episode you can't go wrong with metzger and okerson and Attell. i mean you cannot go wrong um i was worried that my my thing broke it fell and the connector the, the cover of it popped off and i was like "Uh oh am i not gonna be able to record this um but i tried it i risked it and it worked so anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry. I didn't get anything specific topic-wise. We talked about bums a little bit. We talked about shooting comedy a little bit. We made some jokes, talked about Donald Sterling. But overall, it was a swing and a miss. So, ladies and gentlemen, Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank, episode 167. 
Oh, and by the way, that Storyteller show, it's not going to be August 8th. It's going to be September. I think the first or second week of September. We're going to do them then. Um, so if you made plans for August 8th, keep those plans because I might be shooting my next special on that or around that date. I'm trying to do it at the Comedy Store. We'll see if that'll happen. We'll see if that'll happen. I think some people are like, well, Gerard just did one there, so it's kind of copying. I'm like, it's not copying. It's my, fucking my home. And that's the most comfortable place I'll ever be doing stand-up. I don't give a shit about... You guys know how I talk about com- comparison, right? Comparison is a thief of joy. So just do your special wherever you want to. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Ari Shafir Skeptic Tank, episode 167. Swing and a miss. It could be 168. I think it's 167, though. Swing and a miss with David Tell and also Big J Okerson and Kurt Metzger. Guys. Yeah, every once in a while they come after me with like music I use. Can we put speakers on that Jeep <laughs> so everybody can hear out here at this... Uh, Freak first. Nick. <laughs> um, welcome well, gonna... to the show. Okerson, Metzger, and Attell are here. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. I'm, so, I'm glad we could get this done at some, at some place. <laughs> Thanks for moving it outdoor to the stand. <laughs> ah, fresco. I like how bundled up you are. <laughs> yeah. 61 degree weather. I feel chilly. Really? Yeah. Jacket weather? No, I left my sweatshirt somewhere. It's not a good story. It's but not interesting. Wearing, but you said you used to go jacket over. I mean, uh, I know this this podcast is basic. It's for and about stories. So it's not for and about oh. stories. It's usually <laughs> about a topic. <laughs> I wanted to talk to you about your drinking, but I don't uh, know if you've been oh, you're like the deep. You're like the deep guy. I want to talk about Comedy Underground, and thank you all for doing it. I yeah, think we're all on different episodes, so that's kind of cool. Is I it got. getting ratings? How's it doing? Yeah, how is it doing? Ratings, that's an old man stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Tweets and page views. Hello from Minnesota, everyone. Hi. How you doing? Uh, it's Welcome to Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank. I'm Ari Shafir, and I'm coming to you live from an Airbnb. I decided not to stay at the hotel in Minneapolis at the Mall of America because how much Mall of America can one person stand? That place seems like it's just a dead mall. Club is all right. Club is good. But the mall itself is like, oh, who's here? No one's here. No one who's anyone is here. Anyway, so what I did is I got an Airbnb and I'm staying at this place. On a, it's, the backyard is on a lake. There's rural it's fucking desolate. Nothing's around here. I went canoeing today. I went goddamn canoeing. This is what I do with my merch money, everybody. So if you come to one of the live shows and buy merch, um, it goes towards shit like this. I went canoeing. Took my, took my shirt off, obviously. Went canoeing. Saw some people in life jackets. And I'm like, life jackets? What are they? And I'm like, oh, I'm smoking pot on a canoe. I don't know how to boat. I think I remember how to swim, but... I was fine, regardless. Um, you guys, before I get started too much, I don't have any big dates to say, so I'm just going to say this. Sam Tripoli is a hilarious comedian. He was someone I've always looked up to, comedically, not, you know, racially. Because who would want to be Armenian? You guys, he, when I got to the comedy store, he was, he was just like getting in there. I remember this waitress, Lauren... Pelts. She was like, they were like flirting with each other, with like that mean flirting that people do. And then he walked away and she goes, God, I want to fuck him. And I was like, wow. But he would do this bit about, about, um, a handicapped stripper, stripper and a, I hear noises out here. I'm on the back porch. I mean, literally the backyard is in our, well, they're up, but they're not on laugh stub yet. So they're on a different site. Hong Kong comedy. Go to that. Um, all right. So anyway, you guys, on today's episode, so get believing yourself by Sam Tripoli right now. If it cost forty dollars, it would be too little, but it would probably not cost nearly that much. Ten? What is it? Ten? Um. Yeah, and I guarantee you, it won't. That money won't go to the bank. Sam Tripoli is using that money to live, to pay his rent. Um. So on this episode, I wanted to interview David Tell. I've been wanting to interview him for a while. And I never know, since he's one of the, like, the kind of guys you look up to, everybody looks up to him comedically. It's like I feel bad about asking people to do my podcast, to bother them. But he seemed to like hinting at it one day that he wanted to do it outside the cellar. So I asked him, and he's like, yeah, sure, I'd love to do it. I was like, sure, anytime. And he goes, well, let me, I've got some stuff to promote that's coming out in a few months or five months. He goes, let's do it then. 
So fine. Anyway, so the stuff he had to promote, I was gone in L.A. It's his special, which everyone should download. You can watch it on the Comedy Central stand-up app. Um, and his show, Comedy Underground. So I figured this is the way I do it to help my friends promote stuff is, you know, I do a regular podcast with them and I'll just release it on the day that it's, you know, so if I, if I record somebody tomorrow and they're releasing a CD in November, I'll just wait till November and release it then. It's just a discussion. And the introduction I'll do new. So I wanted to get Dave to talk about his giving up drinking. And Dave was not comfortable doing the podcast alone. He wanted Metzger and Okerson to be there for him. One, to promote the Comedy Underground, the stand-up series that he hosts on Comedy Central. 1 a.m. every Saturday night for the next two weeks. Uh, also available on the Comedy Central app. But 1 a.m. on Saturday night on Comedy Central. Um, so he said, how about we get some guys, you know, so I'll be comfortable. And also, uh, you know, they'll be on the show, so we'll promote it. And I was like, yeah, okay. So those guys... I know they both looked up to him, and they went on the road with him a little bit, too. I know Jay has. I don't know about Kurt. Anyway, I still somehow thought I could finagle Dave Attell into giving it up about quitting drinking and getting deep like that. Okerson was like, no, you never will. I should have gotten him alone. I should have gotten him alone. And if I knew I wasn't going to get that shit, I should have just stayed on one thing, like make it all about New York or make it all about bums or just all for just a shirt. Interesting. That's very... That's well, very actually, young it's very young girl of you. Yeah, it's, it's middle school. <laughs> it's middle school. It's, yeah, well, you don't know any better. Shorts and a full coat. I pull it's my, a boy who likes jacket. I pull with the it. sleeves over my hands so I don't have to touch people during the square dancing. I like, Ari, how you're not wearing headphones, so we're really going on faith that this is all coming out. Yeah, man. I like that. When God has blessed you in the past, it's well, not going to be any different. the band's kicking in, so I have to go in a minute. I have to sing. <laughs> Dave, goes, you do, I get the feeling you do not like doing podcasts. I, you know what? I, I've done about 50 hours of podcasting in the last three weeks. So yeah. I came to it late, but I came to it hard. <laughs> you did them all, right? You did the whole L.A. run. I did the L.A. podcast. I worked my way through the uh, the Midwest. Yeah, where'd you I did the, the Rooster Report. Okay. I did yeah, um, nice. uh, eenymeenymineymo.com. I did all of them. <laughs> Do you guys get here. hit up in every city you go to for podcasts? Well, there is this podcast in every town. I like that. Yeah. I get hit up to call into podcasts That's a lot. Call into them, and then they harass me if I like can't make their fucking phone call to their podcast. Do you talk to their producer slash mother on the phone first, and then they? <laughs> oh, Kurt, you should tell them about the the guy. Like that's such a great like every comic probably has that guy. The guy we started with in Philly, who gets mad. He's like, you want a big opportunity like to be in this oh, movie. Yeah. Oh, and then, and then you get, and then, but then you like when you don't answer because you know it's bullshit. He's like, "Hey, you don't fucking answer." No, do you know what? I got back to him, and, and then, then he didn't get back to you. No, right? then he told me like, "Oh, thanks, but you're not right for this." Like he wanted what? me to call back so he could tell yeah, what's me the story. I didn't have the oh, credit. Yeah, tell him what? Tell him the guy though. This fucking guy we used to do comedy with. I should probably just say his name because who yeah, gives okay. a shit? Well, he changed it. <clears throat> I don't know what his real name is, but we knew him as Michael Rage. Like a rage? Yeah, the raging bull of comedy. Okay. You got to tell sense. me again what it Italian? is, though, for real. Because I, I want to find his videos again. I'm hey, going to hey, guess Italian? Hey, no, he's a Jewish guy that is he? Italian. Yeah. Was he Jewish? Yeah. He's very tan. He's got a Rich Voss thing to him, but if Rich Voss just went fucking total rogue, just like idiotic, uh, like tucks in his... He like buys... He, but he wears like, you know, he's from Philly or Atlantic City, I guess, but so he wears, like, you know, like Eagles jerseys, like, tucked into jeans, like <laughs> yeah. that look, and, like, yeah. uh... Yeah. So he mean, always has some, like, Russian girl he ordered, like, on he's, his arm. He's, he's, he's got a I lot of jewelry. Even, like, hated his guts or anything, but one thing that sucked about it, he would, is in the... is, like, some grass and then water. It's own private... Ah, oh, this place is amazing. Also, thank you in Minnesota to everyone who came out, especially Thursday, who gave me tons of weed on Thursday... I maybe not need any more for the rest of the week. It was perfect out here. If I had gotten mushrooms, I probably would have done those today. <laughs> or, or maybe tonight, actually. It's warm. It finally got warm. The first two days were cold, and now it's fucking beautiful. It's 72, 73 out here. Oh, I got to do this Airbnb more often. I found an apartment in New York, you guys. Just so you know. So anyway, back to Sam Tripoli. This joke about handicapped strippers. And it was like, he was my version of like, look... I don't go to strip clubs. I didn't at the time. And you know what? Since then, I don't really like them either. But Sam Tripoli, to me, read as a guy who had been to strip clubs, and I wanted to have his version of it. You understand? Like, comedically, artistically, I want to hear someone who's been through it do their version of it. Comedically. 
And he did that. And he's always been someone who'd come up with tons of material. Super prolific. And guess what? He's also my co-host on Punch Drunk Sports on my sports podcast, which, by the way, if you're too into sports, it's only like 20% sports. The rest is just shit talking. Um, But he's releasing a CD, everybody. It's called Believe in Yourself, and it's going to be on iTunes on May 20th. That's Tuesday. It's going to be available on iTunes everywhere. You can pre-order it right now. I'm pretty sure. Go get it. Believe in Yourself. I've heard it, and it's great. Some of his best bits are on there. Oh, I had a fire pit out here. I sat in the fire pit last night. <sighs> Drank some wine. Fucking watched the fire, you guys, by the lake. It was awesome. Believe in yourself. It's an amazing CD by Sam Tripoli. Buy it on iTunes. Guys, you should support great comedy. And he hasn't released anything in forever. And he's a great underrated comic. I'm telling you, you're not going to be disappointed if you go get that. It's dirty. It's dark. It's dark. I'm trying to think if he has any clean, not dark stuff, but I don't think so. <laughs> but you guys will love it. So it was recorded live in Edmonton, so all Canadians should get it. But it's released live in America, so all Americans should get it. By the way, my Chinese dates, my Shanghai and around there dates are on my website. And the Hong Kong dates, 